plans in place to repair them for a while, just didn't have the funding to put those plans into action. No word yet on when the water features will be operational again, but we'll keep you posted on that. This is Chris 6 News at 6. Good evening, everyone. For 45 years, Officer Matt Murphy's case was cold, but not closed. But a Jim Wells County grand jury recently indicted Roberto Lopez on capital murder charges for Officer Murphy's death. And our Greg Chandler was there and now joins us. First off, Greg, I hear that Lopez is already behind bars in another state. Lee, Roberto Lopez is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole in Alabama for armed robbery. Now, this indictment is 45 years in the making. Police and prosecutors hope it brings closure. Four years old. This, this is a, a crime that hit our community back in the 70s, and it's never gone away. In the nearly 45 years since Officer Matt Murphy was killed during a traffic stop, investigators from several agencies worked countless hours trying to find his killer. We just, you know, followed up on, it, on, on the information that we had, and, you know, and uh, through our investigation, we... Uh, interviewed several people. I mean, we interviewed hundreds. The investigation picked up speed again in January 2017 when a tip from a jailhouse informant implicated Roberto Lopez. He was a suspect, you know, from the, actually from the get-go. That new information was enough to build a grand jury case. On May 10th, Lopez was indicted for the December 1st, 1974 murder of Officer Murphy. The next step, extraditing Lopez from Alabama. There's a lot of I guess red tape that has to go through the two different states, Texas and Alabama, and working out extradition and working out what the next steps would be after that. Alice police have mourned Murphy for more than four decades. They're happy to have an indictment, but won't be satisfied until there's a conviction. It's still not over. To me, it's only just begun. Now we're going to prove this. Oh, I, I try to prove this. Now, members of Officer Murphy's family were also there for today's announcement of the indictment. They declined to be interviewed on camera, but Chief Perez says they are happy to see that Lopez has been indicted. Lee? All right, thank you very much, Greg. Although Lopez has been charged with capital murder, prosecutors have not yet decided whether they will seek the death penalty. For now, they say they'll focus on the extradition process, which could take anywhere from 30 days to several months. It's Taco Tuesday, and you know what that means. We're trying out some of the best tacos in the Coastal Bend. We heard about these modern street tacos, so our first stop is the Taco Shop. The Taco Shop is owned by culinary chef Rodney Levis. After traveling and spending time away from home, he wanted to open up his own place in a building that was all too familiar. My grandparents had a bakery in this very location for a long time. My family owns the building. Over the last couple of years, I spent a lot of time in Miami and uh, decided to come back home and take that chance. With that Miami flair, Rodney has turned the famous Mexican street tacos in something more modern. Change it up a little bit, not just the typical street taco. So it just a matter of just kind of kicking them up a little bit. And kicking them up is what he did. You can get your popular breakfast tacos or come for the taco shop specialties. Rodney showed us firsthand one of the most requested street tacos at the taco shop, made with my favorite, barbacoa. Let's make the vaca frita. Absolutely. The vaca frita, a modern twist on the classic barbacoa breakfast taco. Rodney sautés some onions on the grill, then adds in his authentic barbacoa that is smoked for almost eight hours. And if you thought this couldn't look any better, it does. And in just a matter of minutes. Starting off with the award-winning tortillas, Rodney places it all together, put on some of that homemade salsa, and cannot forget the protein of the hour. We're going to top it with our over-easy egg. And just like that. This is quite possibly the most unique taco I've ever seen in my life. But that is the magic That's a taco. Itself. Rodney, that looks so good, and now let's try this one. Absolutely. All right, let's do it. The pork carnitas, starting with smoked pork butt. I'm just going to take this, kind of chop it up a little bit. Then throw some more onions on the grill, along with the pork. Then in a minute's time, grab that champion tortilla. And then we're just going to top it off with a little bit of our queso blanco, queso fresco. All right. Seriously, so beautiful. Probably the most beautiful taco I've ever seen. Rodney finally prepared his two favorite tacos, so we are going to dig in my favorite part of the day. We have our 
vaca frita taco, and our pork carnitas. Checking out the pork carnitas first, it only made sense that I got an up-close look and taste. Let me just say, Rodney, that's when you know it's a good taco when everything's spilling out from the sides, right? Yeah. <laughs> the carnitas had a hearty, smoky flavor, and that queso blanco really ties it all in. And now, the moment I've been waiting for, I've had my eye on the vaca frita, <laughs> so I was ready to devour. It's the first one that you'll see on the menu here at the taco shop, uh, um, and I'm excited because I have barbacoa, onions, and a fried egg. You can't get that in Corpus Christi. Rodney says he loves to eat barbacoa with the fried egg, and if you've never tried the vaca frita, you seriously don't want to miss out. I even have egg all over my hands. <laughs> I mean, it's messy and it's perfect. This is the kind of taco you need to come get. The smell of tacos will bring you to the one and only, the taco shop. I just finished the vaca frita and the pork carnitas. You can only get these modern street tacos here in the Coastal Bend. That's what makes the Coastal Bend unique. Rodney does his job very well here at the taco shop. Make sure you come out and see them because you will not regret it. Oh, God. Well, this is one of those stories you, you hope to get to work on, right? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say that you love pizza, but it's another to say that you want to work with it for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. That's just exactly though what one man has done, starting at the bottom and then climbing all the way to the top. And it's been quite the journey. Our Ali Cassetti spent the morning at a local Domino's Pizza getting to know the owner. And Ali, I understand the business has become a real family affair. It sure has. Starting off as a delivery boy at the age of just 22, Daniel Dane began his career with Domino's. After overcoming a few major obstacles, Daniel and his wife, Catherine, now own 11 stores in Corpus Christi and all of the surrounding areas. Not even a stage four cancer diagnosis could stop these two from excelling. I loved the job. Like it was the funnest job I've ever had. And I, I wanted to be a general manager and then, you know, I had to work my way up to that. Starting in 1985, Daniel Dane entered the Domino's family as a delivery boy with the hopes of one day becoming a general manager. And so I dropped out of school. I wanted to become a Domino's Pizza manager and franchisee, so that didn't go over too well at home. For some, not going to college could have easily become a regret, but that wasn't Daniel's case. In four years, he earned the title of GM, then later supervisor, and eventually became a franchisee owner in Corpus Christi in 99. You know what? I can do this. I need to learn. And uh, so if you, if you don't go to college, you still need to learn. And so I, I took every class I could. I read tons of books. Like everything I could do to, you know, get better in the business world. It wasn't long before he got his wife, Catherine, to join the team as well. And her timing to be trained as a successor couldn't have been better. I was like the next, like if something happened to me, something happened, well, something did. I got cancer and it was pretty bad. And, you know, I had an expiration date, so she kind of had to run the company while I was out for a year and a half. It was in 2012 Daniel was diagnosed with stage 4 squamous cell cancer along with a chance of survival ranging from 10 to 15 percent. That year and it really ended up being about two years that I ran everything they really figured out and I figured out that I can do it. With their relationship at home and work both growing stronger the couple says they never doubted he would be okay. And now the two are doing more than okay as they look to keep expanding this summer. It was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. You can find the Danes at their stores, which include every Domino's in Corpus Christi, Portland, Annabelle, Robstown, and Alice. And by the end of the summer, they're looking to expand from owning 11 to 14 stores with openings taking place on Leopard, the Island, and in Sinton. So 13 seniors at Ray High School getting recognized today for their upcoming graduation and also for being members of the Triumph Over Kid Cancer Do That One Thing Council. At today's senior award ceremony, the 13 students who are members of the council at Ray were presented with orange cords that they are going to wear over their gowns. Over Let's see, three of those seniors were presented with plaques as well for serving as presidents of the council, and they were awarded scholarships as well. All of them met the requirements of the club in order to receive their orange cords. And the city of Corpus Christi is extending its grace period for residents who have passed due utility accounts until June 30th. A software glitch in the city's utility billing system last October led to more than 14,000 commercial and residential customers to not receive bills. Now, if an account isn't settled by the end of June, the city will issue a disconnection notice in the first week of July. This is Chris 6 News at 5.
Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Veterans Memorial High School was placed on lockdown for nearly an hour today after someone posted an alarming video on Snapchat threatening the school. And Chris 6 News reporter Emily Hamilton is joining us live from Veterans Memorial with the very latest. And Emily, I understand the person who made the threat was a former student at Veterans Memorial. Yes, Paulo, that student, uh, this is all according to CCISD police. Uh, they say that that student used to attend Veterans Memorial, but now attends Toloso Midway. And police say he posted a video of someone driving by Veterans Memorial with a pistol in their lap with an extremely vulgar caption. CCISD's chief of police didn't say how the suspect was identified, but that person was charged with making a terroristic threat and unlawful carry of a weapon. CCISD police were informed by Toloso Midway officials a little after noon today that the threat had been posted. Several Corpus Christi police officers and CCISD officers were on campus to deal with that lockdown, which was lifted about an hour later when the suspect in question was arrested at a nearby home. And CCISD police, police chief Kirby Warnicky says they don't take these threats lightly. Well, obviously, by the police response, it's pretty serious. The school was on lockdown for about an hour, so this is a serious event. And it ultimately led, led to the arrest of the person. And when we were on campus earlier today, parents were actually coming to the school to pick up their children early because they said that they fear for their safety. And CCISD police say they will have extra patrol officers on each CCISD campus for the remainder of the week to ensure the safety of the students. Paulo. All right, Emily, thank you for that. And according to Kathy Middle School's Facebook page, the school was placed on a modified lockdown due to a possible disturbance in the area. Peter Zanoni attended his first city council meeting as Corpus Christi city manager today. Zanoni told the council his experience as San Antonio's deputy city manager prepared him for the job at hand. He's already heard a lot of ideas on how to improve the city. He says it's time to start thinking big and is willing to make a long-term commitment to Corpus Christi. I'm here for the long haul. This is not a two-year uh, stint. As long as the mayor and council will have me, I know I'm going to have to perform to have you keep me here, but this is a long-term commitment. Now, Zanoni says that the city is undergoing tremendous growth and needs a city manager who's willing to stick around long-term. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this coming weekend, and I'm in charge of bringing the winds down in Port Aransas. There will be a wonderful art show, an art exhibit. Or what do we call it? It's an art festival. It's an art festival. And I'm here with John Olby. He's one of the artists that will be on display. He's also one of the best surfers in Texas. Used to be. Used to be. <laughs> anyway, it's the 14th annual Art Fest this weekend. And John, tell us who's going to be there and what time we need to go. We've got over 50 artists from all over the region. Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. And it's going to be at the Jerry McDonald Field, which is on the main road in Port Aransas. All right. They're going to have a lot of tents set up. We're going to have shade, entertainment, all acoustic, strolling musicians. <laughs> and the, um, the show starts Saturday at 10 a.m. All right. Now, we're showing your work. Yes. Tell us about your work. You're very coastal. I am totally coastal. I, I try to represent what I know and, and love in my heart is images of the beach but i'm in a 3d category of mixed media so i'm doing some different stuff this year he's got a little sand it's a 3d thing there. i've got a, i've got a lot of sand a lot of quartz i've got resins and uh epoxies and you were telling me about the shell that, yes that, the that seashell you, is, yeah. is a rather unique piece if you get that painting and hold it up to your ear you will hear the weather report oh, i hope it's mine it's your weather report <laughs> and you don't have to get up at five you can listen to it at noon oh that you can <laughs> on a tape playback but uh, you can see very nicely how he uses sand and you also have uh, used some mixed media there that I'm familiar with. Yes, uh, on that one painting he's zooming in on now, I went out and actually used some recycled material from my street. That's a recycled pothole, <laughs> and uh, I incorporated it into the whole uh, concept of my, uh, my art. So it's one of the biggest uh, art festivals uh, on the yes, and, in, and it kicks in our off, area. Kicks off the summer season. Uh, we're very excited about it. Everything benefits for the uh, Port Aransas Art Center, and the uh, admission is a five dollar donation to yeah. the art center. And I must say, you have the most beautiful invitation poster I've ever seen. Yeah, that's just gorgeous. 
So it's the art center. Yes. And here's one final piece of work that John did. Literally, it's an old surfboard, it's a boogie a, board. It's an old surfboard. Uh, that's kind of what I had always been known for. So you give it a patina here. Right. I made this one look like copper. This thing weighs five pounds, but it looks like it's 500. Yep, that's right. John, wish you a great weekend. Uh, art Festival people, that's where you want to be this coming weekend in Port Aransas. We'll be back with a final look at your forecast coming up in a moment. Chris 6 News at noon continues. Welcome back. If you're looking for another job or even looking maybe to, well, kickstart a new career, I've got some folks that you're going to want to meet. I've got Elizabeth and Melissa here. Now, you are from Coastal Bend, SHRM. What does SHRM stand for? <laughs> that is the Society of Human Resources Management. Okay, and that's like a, a national thing, right? Correct, correct. Okay, and y'all are an affiliate of that. Yes, we are the local chapter. Oh, okay. What kind of things do y'all do? We work, uh, network all of the HR professionals in our area, uh -huh. so across all different industries, every HR professional is able to come together um, and really collaborate and just you know discuss what's happening. Um, there's a lot of you know changes yeah. to you know human resources in the last couple that's of years. A big job. So that's a lot of human resources <laughs> you've got to do this with. Let's talk about a job fair that you yes. guys have coming up. What's that all about? Okay, so it's our 19th annual mm -hmm. Hire Me Job Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, this year it's going to be at the Holiday Inn Downtown Marina. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tomorrow. Um, it's from 10 to 2 with early admission for our veterans starting at 9 o'clock. Okay. We're going to have Hot C95 there on site from new, uh, 10 to noon. That's a radio station, right? Yeah. I should mention that. Because <laughs> fun? my audience is going to go, Hot Z95. <laughs> what, what band is that? It's a radio station that's going to be there. And uh, you said they're doing drawings and giving away prizes. Yes. Okay. Uh, who should come to this job fair? Anyone, everyone. Uh -huh. uh, there's going to be administrative for professional jobs, industrial. We're going to have, uh, you know, oil field companies there, medical, insurance, mm -hmm. staffing agencies there, so they can help put you where you need to be based yeah. on your resume and what you're looking for. Now, what should I, what should I bring if I'm going to come down here? Well, definitely dress to impress. Be mm -hmm. prepared for an interview. Um, absolutely bring multiple copies of that resume. We want to make sure that all the employers um, get to look at that. Um, we're also going to be having a resume review um, section, so if you're maybe not confident in what's on there, we definitely have HR professionals on site to review that before you enter the fair with all the employers. Yeah. Now, the, the, the idea here is I need to act like I'm going to get hired, right? Yes. I need Correct. to show up with the mindset that somebody's going to love what I've got to offer. That's great. And this is, I'm going to walk out of here with a new job. Uh, are employer, employers hiring on the spot, or is there a way How's that work? Actually, we have an interview room, so if any employers do want to interview at that time, we have a special room for them wow. to do interviews, yes. Very nice, yeah. very nice. Okay, um, you mentioned something about this, it begins at 10, but, but you've got a deal for veterans, right? We do, from 9 a.m. to 10 o'clock, early admission for veterans only. Oh, wow, that's cool. Okay, all of this is on our website, but we'll mention it again, Holiday Inn, Downtown Marina, that's over on Shoreline, tomorrow. So you need to get your stuff together now and get ready to get down there tomorrow morning. Uh, I'd say just get down there early if you can and uh, go and visit with as many employers as you possibly can. Again, all of this on our website. Head to ChrisTV.com and you'll find links to everything you need to know. Ladies, thanks for being here. Thanks so much. Appreciate you guys. All right. Well, a the recent rain has also left many yards with overgrown grass and pretty tall weeds. Now, if that sounds like your yard, you're probably going to want to mow it soon or even face a fine from code enforcement. Chris 6 News reporter Ashley Portillo explains. My tall grass is an eyesore, plus it can hide any rodents or mosquitoes and overgrown weeds like this could also make sidewalks impassable for any neighbors. And when it rains, this foliage could even clog up any storm drains. So that's why code enforcement is warning property owners that they can receive notice of violations and possibly a fine if those weeds aren't removed. So how much money in fines are we talking? And what else could failing to remove this kind of brush mean for you as a property owner? We'll have that story for you this evening on Chris 6 News. In other news. Well, good noon time, everybody. We are looking at uh, some rather steamy weather. Look at that. It's 90 degrees already, and we don't even have some sun. That tells me pressure is high, and that's keeping us under the uh, lid there. Look at that. It feels like it's already 103. We're getting into the week of where the heat index is going to be out there. Of course, the winds right now are fairly quiet. I, I can't believe that 12 miles an hour because it's been blowing 
hard all over the place. Now, uh, last night, uh, you probably, you may have heard, I mean, it's a, it's a huge national story. Big Spring, Texas had hail the size of golf balls. Uh, and this was just one of over 200 uh, storm reports that came in of the nasty weather that blew through. Let's back up a little bit. It all started right here in Midland. But now the line is pretty much weakened and it's now rolling northward. The center of it is rolling northward. So the intensity of the showers in the Dallas area are not too bad. I mean, it could be a whole lot worse. Uh, they do have a tornado watch, uh, a tornado warning watch area, I'm sorry, uh, for Oklahoma. Now here we are, San Antonio. You can see how the few sprinkles, the tail end of it moved through. But nothing really even uh, as close as Kennedy. That's about it. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to that. Tomorrow, less of an opportunity for anything as we're going to continue with this windy and humid weather pattern. Here's today, and you can see how it all pretty much stops just to the north of us in terms of any shower potential. And then tomorrow, it's uh, high pressure building in again and keeping it squeezed down while the focus returns to the panhandle, believe it or not. Here's a view of what's happening. Here is the uh, frontal system. It's really more of a dry line right there. That's the focus. Uh, here's the lifting. Here's the warm air running into the cold air. You know, while all this was going on, I believe it was snowing in Denver, so it's just a weird map. Now, behind this is this storm, which is going to drop right in that same area. So North Texas, the later as we get into the weekend, may get into some rough weather, and we're going to talk about it because a lot of people will be traveling. In addition to all of that, just to make life even more complicated, uh, we had the first tropical storm of the season. Yes, here we are, two weeks ahead of schedule. Uh, this is Andrea. It was up to 50 miles an hour. It's down to 35. Uh, it is not a problem, but it is uh, a little early in the season for it to get going. There's our dry line. That's going to make it very hot to the west of it. In terms of us, we're going to stay on the cloudy side by the time we get uh, to the weekend. And this is very important. Everybody's been asking me this question. So today we had a 40-mile-an-hour uh, peak wind. Tomorrow, peak wind of gusts of 35, gusts of 30 on Thursday, 28, and then 25 over the weekend. Almost a traditional sea breeze where we start light, 10 to 15, and get up uh, 20 to 25 in the afternoon. So it's still a little breezy, but nothing like what we've had for today. That's your seven-day forecast brought to you by NEC Co-op Energy. And Mike, we'll toss it back to you. All right, thank you, Mac. Well, commuters heading into the city from Portland came across a pretty disturbing scene. And I want to warn you here, the images in this next story are hard to watch. Several dead birds were lying near the Indian Point Pier turnaround on Highway 181. In fact, at least five large birds were on the road. It's not known how they got there or how long they'd been there. In fact, they may have been part of a large group of pelicans that was spotted by our photographer struggling to fly nearby in the high winds. News from Alice, where an indictment has been announced in the 1974 murder of an Alice police officer. Roberto Lopez was indicted for capital murder and the death of Officer Matt Murphy. Officer Murphy was shot to death during a traffic stop shortly after midnight on December 1st, 1974. Alice police say that Lopez has been considered a suspect in the case since the 1990s, and he's currently serving a life sentence for armed robbery in Alabama. Prosecutors say that they will start the extradition process to bring Lopez to Texas for trial. And I received my first aid marriage badge, so I know how to do that. <laughs> you do. So go to Mac. Call yeah, Mac if you need Mac. anything. <laughs> well, my scoutmaster was very adamant that we learned this, and <laughs> we did a good job. Hey, good morning, folks. Get a load of this. This is Midland County last uh, yesterday afternoon as uh, all the violent weather was rolling through. Not only that, but watch this in Big Spring, Texas. Uh, this is uh, courtesy of Mike Gillespie, right? Or one of Yeah, your we've got some friends out there that were sending uh, video and uh, pictures last night. And so so uh, our colleagues uh, covering the news up there are sending in photos, so we're borrowing them from them, so thank you. The hail, look at that. Uh, man, that is just something else. Well, here's another map that I want to show you because, uh, believe it or not, we also have a tropical storm today, and I just wanted to show you that, that since the year 2000, we've had almost every year a preseason storm. Now, it doesn't say whether it's going to be a very 
active season or not active season, but you know that many of these have been very active. And so it used to be that we waited June too soon, July standby, but now we're getting them in May and we're going to be showing you uh, why the Atlantic is warming up. Now, all the big stuff that was out in Midland, Odessa, and Lubbock, uh, Mule Shoe, Big Spring, all that has moved. It's rolling over Dallas right about now. You can see it right about there. All of these are reports of either a hail, flooding, and or tornadoes that occurred last night. The line is moving into the Kerrville area and is beginning to strengthen up a little bit, so it'll be in Bernie probably within the hour and San Antonio within two hours, uh, but the southern end of it is not as strong as the northern end of it was yesterday afternoon. Of course, uh, they were perfect. I mean, the, the Gulf wind, the cold air, the heating, everything was perfect for a breakout. Now, here's where we expect the severe weather today, which is basically Arkansas. Well, I think we're, we're just way too far south. Most of the showers to this morning will end somewhere around Interstate 10. And tomorrow, less of an opportunity of any kind of a shower activity around here. Now, as you can see, the storm center is now right about there. The complex of storms rolling through the uh, Midwest and the Southern Plains all the way down to Texas. And then there's another one right behind it. So it's not over with. People are getting tired of the severe weather up north. This is Andrea, up to 50 miles an hour yesterday. Not a problem because it is moving out to sea. Nonetheless, it is a preseason storm, uh, something that is now almost a, um, uh, an, an annual thing uh, that since the year 2000 as the Atlantic waters continue to warm up. There you see the storm system uh, skirting right through Houston. Uh, there's a dry line there. It's really kind of a dry line. So western areas may see 100 degrees today. We're going to be, of course, in the 90 degree range and quite humid if you're going to be outdoors working. And then by the time we get to Thursday, the Gulf air rolls back in. We'll have maybe a sprinkle or two of the sea breeze showers. But then, believe it or not, we get ready for the next round of severe weather up north. Boy, it's been one for the record books. So the forecast doesn't change much. Windy, up to 40 miles an hour today, 30 miles an hour tomorrow, a little bit of a decrease Thursday, and then Friday it increases again, but it looks like it's going to be more of a south wind, and that means we're going to dry up. Well, I, I wish I could say dry up. We're going to be uh, less cloudy, more sunny, and temperatures hovering between 88 and 90 all the way through the Memorial Holiday weekend. That is your seven-day forecast. Brought to you by NEC Co-op Energy. It is birthday time. If you know someone's got a birthday coming up, just let us know about it. Go to the website, find that birthday clip tab there, and it'll show you how to upload a photo. Join me in wishing our sunrisers a happy birthday. Well, animal lovers can tell you that this is the time of year when more kittens seem to be born. But the Corpus Christi Animal Care Services says don't pick them up. Sunrise reporter Chelsea Torres is live at CCACS this morning. So, Chelsea, I'm sure there's a good reason behind this warning. Priscilla, there is, you know, Corpus Christi Animal Care Services tells me that last year around this time, they had to euthanize about 80% of the kittens that were brought into their facility. With their new program, they're hoping to change those numbers. Right now is the time where most mothers are starting to give birth during this time. Um, so you can see a large influx of kittens being born. And according to Corpus Christi Animal Care Services, you should leave the kittens alone if you stumble upon them. Usually I found them under a tree or I found them in this hidden location. I didn't see them. I mean, the moms are hiding them, so they're, she doesn't want them to be found. CCACS has limited resources when taking care of kittens that are brought in. And last year, almost every kitten brought in was euthanized. Less than a month, we've already seen them almost about 40 kittens come in. Um, and most of those are probably now have their mothers out there looking for them. They get um, more nutrients and vitamins and stuff like that. They, they need to support themselves through their mother that sometimes we cannot provide. In an effort to save as many kittens as possible, CCACS has began a new program. We did start this new neonatal program in hopes to be able to take care of all the babies here that are coming into us. More kittens means more around the clock work. Normally they have to be fed every two to four hours. Those kittens need at least 15 minutes for every time they're being fed. Cool. And then after that they actually have to be expressed so that they can use the bathroom because they're not able to do that on their own yet. With little resources and plenty of kittens to keep alive and well, 
CCACS asks for your help. We can use donations for KMR, it stands for Kitten Milk Replacer. Um, that is what we use to help feed all the kittens that are here, and we also can use um, more blankets and this. Now, Corpus Christi Animal Care Services says that if you do see a litter of kittens, the best thing to do is just monitor them for a few hours to see if that mom does actually, in fact, come back. If you'd like to find more information on how you can help them out through this neonatal program, you can find all of it on our website, christtv.com. Mac, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Take seconds to save a life. And you really want to be prepared if you're ever called upon to actually have to do something like that. One of the ways to make sure that you're ready is through an initiative called Stop the Bleed. Sunrise reporter Roland Rodriguez is out at the Del Mar College West Campus. And Roland, I understand they're going to be providing some training for us to be able to learn how to do that. Ah, good morning, guys, and good morning, South Texas. The Stop the Bleed program wants to teach people that stopping blood loss is just as critical as knowing how to perform CPR. Seconds matter in a life or death situation, and uncontrolled bleeding is the number one cause of death in a trauma. Is that if someone sustains a serious uh, injury that involves some bleeding from a major artery, that they could pass away within uh, five minutes. So it's critical that this, um, t these techniques are learned by the public and they know what to do and they um, are ready to respond and save a life. Unfortunately, we see mass shootings reoccur over and over again, and they can happen in any community. So the community itself needs to be prepared. It's been proven in um, the Las Vegas shootings and the Pulse nightclub shootings that the, uh, the people on scene who were there first before emergency responders saved lives by knowing what to do, knowing how to properly ap apply a tourniquet um, and also how to uh, stop bleeding. To help improve the odds for our community, the Coastal Bend Regional Advisory Council will host a Stop the Bleed event Thursday as part of a nationwide effort to teach hands-on lessons that could save lives. Um, we are one of 22 regional advisory councils in the state of Texas. Um, we're all going to be working um, to provide this education to the public on May 23rd, which is National Stop the Bleed Day. This class will give you the skills and knowledge to provide immediate bleeding control to a victim. You'll learn how to stop bleeding, apply a tourniquet, and pack an open wound. Uh, we have a membership of all 18 hospitals in the Coastal Bend region and all of our EMS agencies. So our instructors come from Christa Spawn, Driscoll, um, Corpus Christi Medical Center, and the Halo Flight all of the EMS agencies, um, the paramedics and the nurses from those facilities, there are members here at the CBRAC and they volunteer their time to teach these skills to the public. Again, this free class will take place on Thursday here at the Public Safety Dome on the Del Mar College West Campus. Guys. And tonight we're giving a thumbs up to Krista Spawn. Spawn employees spending their day delivering baskets full of treats to fire stations across the coastal bend. It was all part to kick off National EMS Week. Spawn employees said they work with paramedics throughout the day and they wanted to make sure they felt appreciated. So a thumbs up to both sides. And by the way, Alan, you couldn't be more wrong, buddy. <laughs> I'm sweet chat. It was hot. What did you say? We were, you were saying, what did you say? It was warm in Amarillo? I hoped it was warm. No, not, yeah. not happening. Which you now, the Coastal Bend Sports Authority, Alan Harwell, with your Chris 6 Sports Report. Hi, good morning. Good evening, everybody. We're guaranteed of at least one area 5A softball team making it to the state tournament this year. The only excitement is building because Flower Bluff and Cal Allen, two old district rivals, will meet this week in a best of three series of captains still to determine who advances to Austin. Tonight, we zero in on the Lady Hornets. It's been an incredible ride so far. And you know when you're still practicing this time of year, it's been an extra special season. District 29 5A champ has not only beat, but they crushed third-ranked Dripping Springs 13-3 to in a one-game winner-take-all affair last Friday night. So it was nice to be back on the practice field this afternoon. The Lady Hornets are red hot. Boy, I'm telling you, they now get their district rivals, Cal Allen, a team they've already beaten twice this year, but you know it's tough to beat a team three times, and there's no secrets going into this one. Clara Bluff knows that anything can happen, especially against a very good Lady Cats team. 
uh, playing a rival, you know, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be tough and it's going to be a challenge. But we're two both like really good teams, and I know that whoever like comes out on top on this game, like they're they're going to be a good team and they're going to do well. I knew at the beginning of the season that this team was special, and I knew that we were going to do special things this year. It's pretty exciting to know that there's going to be a Corpus Christi team that comes out in the state championship of this game. You, you know, we know each other very well. We know who they pitch and who we pitch and who can hit there and who can hit here. Um, you know, it's just going to be whoever flinches first, whoever has that first air, because it's going to be a really great game. Hey, these kids are just fun to coach. Um, they come out, they act silly. You know, people probably think we don't have many serious practices. We do, um, but more than anything, them just being able to come out here, relax, and have fun has been our success to this year. All right, that is certainly a recipe for success, and we will check in on the Lady Cats from Cal Allen tomorrow night. So here's your lineup now. All three games at Cabinets Field starting Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, game two, Thursday at 7, and a game three, a game three if need be, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, again, if necessary. All right, now, we as of right now, as we enter the playoff games this week, we still have three local softball teams playing and four area baseball teams still alive and well and chasing state titles for a complete list of all the games. You can go to ChrisTV.com. You'll find it right there on the sports tab. Finally tonight, we're leaving with good news. Uh, the Hooks went on the road this evening at Amarillo. Final score of 5-1. to one. And uh, makes you wonder, is it as hot in Amarillo as it is in Corpus? I bet it's humid there also. What do you think? I hope it is I know anyway. it's windy. Yeah, you know, I know it is. It's windy. We'll ask Juan. <laughs> Thumbs is up next. The SAT is a crucial test for any high school student looking to pursue a college education. And now the company behind the test, College Board, is making a change that could help students who come from a background that's filled with hardships. Approximately 15 socioeconomic factors will now contribute to what is known as an adversity score. Our Ali Cassetti has more on what exactly that is and how that score will be calculated. We start their freshman year. And every year after that, we uh, try to capture them until their seniors. And even their senior year, we're pushing for them to take that test. The SAT is one of the most highly encouraged standardized tests for college-bound seniors to take. But now students can expect a change to the SAT as College Board is now making moves towards adding in an adversity score. It tells a story, especially for a school like Moody, where our economically disadvantaged rate is about 85 to 90 percent any given year. The new scoring system works on a scale of 1 to 100. The College Board will look at different factors surrounding a student's community and school. Everything from conditions to income inequality, to opportunities available to that student to further their education. A score of 50 or higher means a student lives in an area surrounding by disadvantages. Moody High School counselor Brittany Brown feels that this addition can help paint the whole picture of a student's academic career. Again, it gives a whole picture of the student, not just this is their score, let's accept them, let's not accept them. Let's look at this student and see, you know, what did they have to overcome or what were they dealing with that their score was like this. The adversity score is not contributed directly towards the SAT score. But college admission administrators are given the information to help make an informed decision on a student. So for me, I feel like it would help me in my case. It would capture my capabilities in terms of testing based on my conditions and my environment. A pilot program has begun testing the adversity score at 50 campuses, including Yale. So far, College Board is seeing positive results as some students who had a slightly lower SAT score for a certain institution are being accepted because of their high adversity score. We're not taking away from the kids who don't have these adversities. We're not taking anything away from these kids, um, but we are giving hope and we are looking at the children who do have these adversities. Alec Cassetti, Chris 6 News. A college board plans to expand their pilot program to over 150 campuses in the fall. It should be noted that a growing number of colleges are dispensing with the SAT, according to educational experts. Adding a subjective layer like this adversity score could cause more schools to simply abandon the test in the future. Well, a video from a doorbell camera probably saved a young girl's life over the weekend. Fort Worth police arrested 51-year-old Michael Webb Saturday, just a few hours after he reportedly kidnapped an 8-year-old girl from her neighborhood. Uh, Webb's car was identified with video from a neighbor's doorbell camera, and it was spotted a few hours later at a nearby motel where police found Webb and the girl. And because of incidents like that, experts say that doorbell cameras are becoming an essential part of home security. And here's the thing, there's so many options available, but which one's the best? Chris 6 News reporter Greg Chandler went to Best Buy on SPID to find out.
Stores like Best Buy offer several varieties of video doorbells. So how do you know which one is right for you? The simple answer, check the specs. This brand right here is really popular. According to Best Buy's smart home experts, there are a few major features to look for in a video doorbell. Resolution, two-way audio, night vision, and motion sensitivity with LED lights. There's also the question of wired versus wireless. If you don't have internet and if you want to have a self-monitored system with a DVR, you'd go with a wired system. Now, if you've got really great internet and you want to monitor everything from your phone, Ring and Arlo are two really great brands that support that. As far as brands go, Ring and Nest specialize in video doorbells. Arlo is another popular brand. But no matter which brand you choose, CCPD recommends to get a subscription to save your recordings. You have to make sure you do your research on the product that you buy to ensure that it is recording. When you put a camera in your house, you tend to see a lot of things that you never thought that you would have seen before. Fort Worth police rescued a kidnapped girl over the weekend thanks to video doorbell footage. Police say any video surveillance helps them investigate crime. It'll give us indicators of the suspect, suspect vehicle, again, the actions. Uh, seriousness of the offense. Video doorbells run between $100 and $250, a small price to pay for home security. So nowadays, having a home security is a necessity. A lot of people like to feel safe and comfortable at home, and this is the equipment that makes them feel that way. Greg Chandler, Chris 6 News. The police also say if your doorbell camera records a crime, turn it over to authorities and don't post it to social media. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. It has been the talk among school officials, teachers, and parents, as well as students for months now, the boundary change for area schools. And now that some changes have been made, the CCISD school board met tonight to discuss some possible modifications that would affect one of the district's elementary schools. And Apollo Salazar joins us now with more on the changes that were discussed. Lee, tonight's discussion dealt with Galvan Elementary School. With the recent boundary changes, Galvan was caught in an attendance boundary that would have had its students eventually feeding to Moody High School. But with the new Mary Carroll High School set to be built almost directly across the street, parents were scratching their heads as to why their children wouldn't attend that campus. After hearing from the community, the CCISD school board decided to modify its recent boundary change. It's something parents favor. Because the new Carroll High School will be directly across the street almost from Galvan Elementary. Uh, we went to the community with some ideas and uh, we approved tonight that uh, they'll have the option to go to South Park, the new South Park, Cunningham at South Park, uh, or Tom Brown and eventually feed into the new Carroll High School. Next year, eighth grade students remaining in the Galvan school area will have the opportunity to choose between Brown and Cunningham. But certainly for all students, the boundary, they will eventually feed to Mary Carroll High School once that school is constructed. Now again, those changes will take effect on August 1st, just in time for the new school year. Hi, good evening everybody. Well, we're guaranteed of at least one Area 5A softball team making it to the state tournament this year. The excitement is building because Flower Bluff and Cal Allen, two old district rivals, will meet this week in a best of three series at Cabinets Field to determine just two advances to Austin. Tonight, we zero in on the Lady Hornets. It has been an incredible ride so far, and you know when you're still practicing this time of year, it's been extra special. Yes, the District 29 5A champions not only beat, they crushed third-ranked Dripping Springs 13-3 in a one-game winner-take-all game last Friday night. So it was nice to be back on the practice field this afternoon. The Lady Hornets are red hot. They now get their district rivals, Cal Allen. They've already beaten them twice this year, but you know the old adage, it's hard to beat somebody three times. It's, there are no secrets between these two programs. Flyer Bluff realizes that anything can happen, especially against a very good Lady Cats team. Uh, playing a rival, you know, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be tough, and it's going to be a challenge, but we're two both, like, really good teams, and I know that whoever, like, comes out on top on this game, like, they're, they're going to be a good team, and they're going to do well. I knew at the beginning of the season that this team was special, and I knew that we were going to do special things this year. It's pretty exciting to know that there's going to be a Corpus Christi team that comes out in the state championship of this game. You, you know, we know each other very well. We know who they pitch and who we pitch and who can hit there and who can hit here. Um, you know, it's just going to be whoever flinches first, whoever has that first air, because it's going to be a really great game. Hey, these kids are just fun to coach. Um, they come out, they act silly. You know, people probably think we don't have many serious practices. We do, um, but more than anything, them just being able to come out here, relax, and have fun has been our success to this year. 
All right, that's certainly a good recipe. They have shown a lot of boys during the playoffs, and we'll check in on the Lady Cats from Cal Allen tomorrow night. So here's what's going to happen now. All three playoff games will be played at Cabinets Field. So right here on the south side, game one, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, game two, Thursday, 7 o'clock, and game three, if necessary, bright and early. This is before Katya ever wakes up on a Saturday, 10 a.m. Again, that is at Cabinets Field. So. Oh, You'll you forgot I got a little one. All right. That's Thanks, Alex. An article in USA Today had some pretty oh, harsh things to say about Robstown. A claim Robstown is the worst city in Texas to live in, and folks there are not taking that story too kindly. We'll have more. I was born here and everything, and I've never had problems. That really insults me. And a senior prank causes a mess and a delay of classes at Cal Allen High School this morning. Sosley, Katia Udiarte, Chief Meteorologist Del Nelson, Sports Director Alan Harwell. This is Chris 6 News at 6. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. Listen, if you picked up a copy of USA Today this weekend, you probably saw an article about Robstown, but it wasn't very flattering. Uh, the story is about some research that ranks Robstown as the worst city in Texas to live in. Our Priscilla Torres has more on that and the sound's response. Robstown, Texas, a small town just west of Corpus Christi with a population of just over 11,000. I was born here and everything and I've never had problems. Dilapidated buildings, crime rate and unemployment. Those are just some of the reasons why this article claims Robstown is the worst city in Texas to live in. But those who live and work in Robstown say that's not fair. That really insults me. And I'm sure that a lot of the people that are, are really uh, love Robstown would feel the same way. So I don't think it's that's true. And if it's like that, what, who are those people that are saying that? What are they doing to make it better? Meanwhile, Robstown's city manager, Herman Rodriguez, says the crime rate number cited in the article is wrong. So any crime at all was considered a violent crime at that time, and, and we've cleaned it up. And again, for 2017, the true number is 27 violent crimes in the city versus 894. It's an issue he says he's corrected with the FBI and DPS, but is still used against Robstown for this article. When they're like, sorry, Robstown, it's kind of offensive uh, to most of our folks because there's no apology needed, not from us. We love our town. Yeah, you got your bad people and your good people, but it's everywhere else. You know, like I said, I've been everywhere around the world, East Coast, South, you know, West Coast, overseas, and it's not, not bad. Priscilla Torres, Chris, 6 News. A statement released by the city of Robstown says the article was reported without comment or verification of data from the city of Robstown. And the statement goes on to say the city has contacted the FBI for confirmation that the crime data used for the article was incorrect. Well, it was a very busy first day on the job for Corpus Christi's new city manager, Peter Zanoni, in council chambers this afternoon for a meeting of the city's business and job development corporation. His day started at 8.30 this morning with a meeting of all the city's department heads. And after that, he had one-on-one -on -one meetings with city council members. And tomorrow, he'll be attending his first city council meeting. This is Chris 6 News at 6. And welcome back. Several cases still pending against Judge Guy Williams, and the future of his career remains very uncertain. And as we reported Friday, he was publicly reprimanded by the Texas State Commission on Judicial Conduct for incidents that happened both inside and outside the courtroom. Chris X News reporter Emily Hamilton has been following this story and joins us now with the very latest. Emily? Katia, I spoke with Judge Guy Williams' attorney a little while ago, and they say they're dismayed with Friday's ruling. A three-judge panel upheld a decision by the Texas Ethics Commission that was issued back in December to issue two public reprimands to Judge Guy Williams. And ultimately, that decision means he cannot serve as a visiting judge or collect retirement. Lengthy court documents outline 13 charges against former District Court Judge Guy Williams that the State Commission on Judicial Conduct says violate ethical standards of both the Texas Constitution and the Code of Judicial Conduct. These charges stemming from incidents inside the courtroom as well as at public events. 
Williams allegedly inappropriately touched several female judges and other county employees at an event back in August of 2017. Williams has adamantly denied these allegations for more than a year. Additionally, he was cited for his behavior and the way he handled multiple family custody cases in his court. During a recent hearing, Williams admitted he was there to shock the clients and make a point. He went on to explain that it was often his practice to lay the hammer down to defendants and their attorneys and that he thought he could scare the bejeebies out of people. Also outlined in the document, Williams made disparaging comments about the Nueces County District Attorney's Office in open court. Williams defended the statements he made about the DA's office, saying he was frustrated because many cases from the district attorney's office from 2014 to 2015 wasted a lot of time in his court. And one of Williams' attorneys says they had hoped the sanctions would be lowered to a warning or a private reprimand. And we do have a full statement from them available for you on our website, ChrisTV.com. They do say that this is a final action and that Williams cannot appeal this ruling. Katya? Yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks so much, Emily. And Guy Williams will be in court again on June 12th. That's when his trial begins for a public intoxication charge from May of last year. A local hospital group is thanking paramedics for being great team members and all their hard work. Now, this week is National EMS Week. Spawn employees are delivering baskets full of treats to fire stations across the coastal bend. This morning, they stopped by fire station number three on Morgan Avenue. Spawn says that they work closely with the paramedics from the station on a daily basis and wanted to make them feel appreciated. And fire station one, or fire station three, is the sixth busiest fire station in the nation and the busiest in all of Texas. Well, we thank you as well. Also, we didn't bring you a gift basket, but we certainly thank you for everything yes, that you do. Welcome back, everyone. A Robstown Elementary School just finished a new addition that caters towards kids with autism. Chris 6 News reporter Ashley Portillo explains how the room will help students across the coastal bend who are on the spectrum. Are y'all ready to make magic? <laughs> This new room has bubble columns and even a sensory wall. It's what dreams are made of for a
station denying any head name for back pain, any LOC, and denies um, uh, denies any blood thinners. Um, there is uh, notice swelling to the medial portion of the, of the patient's right ankle uh, with some bruising. Uh, the patient does have a, a positive pulse. Um, she is having some abnormal uh, motor function into her uh, to her right foot. Uh, no other in injuries noted. Uh, current vital signs, we have a blood pressure of 180 over 90. Delta 480, Delta 370, Delta 480, Delta 380, Delta 380, Delta 380, Delta 380, Delta 
She's going to be left over as an Acapulco. It's going to be for an 81-year-old male that's conscious and breathing, uh, high blood pressure, feeling dizzy. Welcome to the dispatch at 041. Welcome to the dispatch at 041. Thank 
students and their parents. It's such They're a only win perfect score in today's to edition this of the kitchen so much. And Sissy's Kitchen, Bud Crackers Raceway Cafe, and, Raceway Cafe and, 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 and Granny Snow Cones all scored a perfect 100. And of course, as always, if you have a complaint, and everything you know inside the sensory room was designed with a purpose. For example, this slide allowed students and of course, to play, move around, get that energy out, night, go to but our also allows students to socialize with one another. A business owner will find out tomorrow some of our kids morning need to relax if police down, patrols keep the homeless from spending the night outside out. his building. One side of the classroom at Robert Driscoll Elementary looks like an indoor playground. We told him just last night that he says they've been doing that since a portion of the Harbor Bridge construction project began near his business nine months ago. And tonight he says he's encouraged by some developments that happened today in regular classrooms. The students that kind of distrust her. I do. I talked to a spokesperson for the company behind the new Harbor Bridge tonight. She told me that the portion of the project in question, a new Staple Street Bridge over Interstate 37 that has the intersection with Antelope Street closed should be complete in the late a few more months. So that would excited. increase traffic in front of Bob Redding's business and several others, which they think will drive off the homeless and reduce crime. Smiles and Rocktown ISD just got more good news. That grant from the Texas Education Agency was renewed for another year, and that means that the district will be getting another $1 million for classroom resources. But Redding says this weather is brought to you by Wilcox Furniture. Workers. Great Therefore, furniture progress. delivered fast and that guaranteed low prices. Today, day now, after the most Redding accurate forecast the in South Texas is. with meteorologist Juan Acuna. It was a big, Hi, everyone. This is the Wilcox well, Furniture Forecast, here. and uh, we had a lot of windy conditions today, and it was very hot and humid as well. But that wind, it really picked up a notch today. And we have several advisories and warnings out because of the wind. We have wind advisories from San Patricio down in Oasis and into Claymore County. That goes in from Tonight, do. Coastal flood advisories for all coastal locations with the high tides out of Port Aransas at 1016 and Bob Paul Pier at 752. Those are early in the morning and water is expected to reach the dunes. So voters here use caution. If we're over we have here, small craft advisories for the uh, bays until uh, early tomorrow morning. Use caution there and also gale warnings for the offshore waters as seas go up to 10 feet with winds up to 40 knots, about 46 miles an hour. And that goes until early tomorrow morning. So if you're going to be doing anything near the water, Days, just a matter of months. Caution. 
Again, that heat index, though, look at that. Wow, it feels like 98 degrees Lake here in the city, 100 out at the Naval Seth Air Station, pretty close to that out in Alice and Kingsville. A man accused of killing. And at the Century Point. 13 seniors at Ray High School are being honored for their work with the organization. These are sustained values that about 50 people are trying to overcome. These are sustained values that about 15 to 30 miles an hour. And today they were given horns. They did gust of 40 miles an hour. 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 They did gust of 40 miles an hour.
from the southeast. Yeah. Nice so it is you. quiet across when the you area. You can see there's nothing Asher on Doppler Copper. radar. There is a front to the north of us and didn't and on manage this day, to bring Asher any rain. But what we do have still Anderson. are some coastal flows. Sometimes he's, you know, a normal playful Asher. And other times, you know, he has bad days and just, like, makes me wish I could just, like, give him a hug and make it all disappear. And we're just trading places. He has the radiomyosome hormone, which is a cancer in his life. You have those days where you wonder what what happened, why, and those are the tough days. His family receiving the news on New Year's Day when Asher woke up with his eye protruding. Asher has undergone conventional chemotherapy and radiation and continues to do so, but it hasn't helped. He has an aggressive and rapid growing tumor, which is why being gained to the wind man through TOKC is so special to Asher's family. The next couple of days, the wind pick up again. Tomorrow with Wendy, Thursday is Wendy, Friday is Wendy, and for the weekend, as far as the humidity, yeah, yeah, that was safe today. We had a cold front approaching and out ahead of it, we saw those dew points staying in the upper yeah. 70s right along Mondays, the coast. I the big relief for the folks to the west here where they didn't see the rock in the humidity. Well, we can't quite get in on that here. This front's going to go back to the west. And that's what we're going to see. 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 And that's what we're a woman ran over her 12-year-old son this morning as she dropped him off at school. That boy was being led out at Crockett Elementary when he dropped his backpack as he got out of his mom's truck. He was trying to pick up some papers that fell out and apparently his mom didn't realize he was still next to the truck. The teen is charged with making a terrorist threat and unlawful carry of a weapon. Veterans Memorial was put on lockdown until after the suspect was arrested. In a situation like this, what you should do is probably get out of the car with your child and make sure that he or she is not in the area. The program at One Robs High Elementary School is giving students with autism an incredible learning experience. Harvard Driscoll Elementary class School just completed a new sensory room, I should now, say. Fortunately, the room the has bubble columns with sensory wall and so much more. One side of the classroom so looks like an indoor playground, and hey, the other is a place for kids to unwind. Students and parents, well, they are just watching. In a Welcome back. My guest, sometimes. Dr. Osbert the, Blow, in addition to kind of, his work um, with Chris Despond, is a lot over um, there. Might not He's distract also distract part of the Coastal yeah. and Regional yeah. Advisory Council. He is part of the pilot project paid for by a grant from the Texas Education Agency. They're here because the they've got information on something they may have heard of. It's called Stop the Bleed. The district will be getting another one million dollars. And help me understand this. It's, it's a well, free training so that we're offering, right? Homelessness yes. and What's crime are causing problems to for several uh, businesses. And at the, the root of it all, mm -hmm. anybody who has no medical fact, training to be able to now respond live outside and Howard be able to Barbecue be called an initial responder before
who's been breaking in there, and they actually have a that. warrant out for uh, that man's now, arrest. Now, if I take something now, the like this and I'm trained, no suspect identified in the break-in over can here I at Red Hot somebody? Tees, which is Absolutely. a t-shirt printing this company. That's owned by the man you're just about to meet. They came through this door. A door that Bob Redding boarded up after burglars broke in in January. Here's where the monitor was. They got away with that 42-inch flat screen along with two iPads and a laptop computer. And that's not the only theft attempt recently. After Redding says his dog stopped another man before he could get in. The crime and the homeless sure the campground, safe. says his front steps become. He blames and, uh, on the identify construction identify zone at the end of the street. We never had an issue because we've always had traffic flow. He says that ended about nine months ago. The closing of the Staples and Antelope intersection as part of the new Harbor Bridge project. Suddenly, no one was driving by. Well, that was It's kind of out of the sight, out of mind. Which is why CCPD frequently patrols this area, an area that had seen improvements through businesses like Reddick. This is what's going to impact this. this these guys continuing to open their businesses. Keeping them open now Absolutely. has Let's more talk struggle. About the training training starts his How day long does this last? Do I have to go all the way or what are we talking slept. about? Here? There's going to be four sessions on Thursday, uh, May 21st, it's, which it's is everything. National but Stop the Blue Day. But even stuck with that chore, Redding says the bigger issue is the prevalence of homelessness in our community, and he wants to do something about it. I'm challenging others of other business people, you know, to get involved and come up with a solution or some help. At 8 a.m., 10 a.m. Um, now, Redding said there is a business along the stretch that actually so hires off-duty Corpus Christi um, police Delmar, officers to stay overnight to keep the police That's safe. That's not a bad idea. The police department agrees, saying, though, okay. that not and every business do anything would likely to be able to afford yes, those security. To have Reporting have live in Corpus Christi, Seth Kovar, Action 10 News. Um, now, so a local a couple number, claimed that the Social Security mm -hmm. Administration uh, was giving them the runaround about a check they never received. Okay. So they Folks, called all of that information is on our website. We're calling just for this week. Later this afternoon, go there, check it out, do yourself a favor, favor, sign up for the free training. Suffered two and, uh, strokes in February 2018. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having me. This is Chris Sixties in Vancouver. Hey, good afternoon, and thanks so much for joining us here. We want to begin by telling telling you about that some vandalism that happened to pay our out in Cal Alley. It, it was, in fact, a senior prank on court that caused again, school to be delayed this morning. To find Officers out what happened were called and how out to, get to the school ASAP, just before 7 a.m. Now, according to police, to the oil was found Basically spread told them across it wasn't parts of the floor. This is fraud, some teachers also and tell us that several work. items were covered in saran wrap. Also, someone hung a large banner that read CHS for sale in front of the school. Meanwhile, the district sent a text message to parents out that, it was that not said students fraud. are being kept in the cafeteria while communities clean up that mess. Security. But the Benavides weren't getting anywhere with them, so they called the troubleshooters. And we called the Social Security office and spoke with a supervisor who agreed to meet with them. While we were there, he called the Treasury Department and said, well, this is a PR case now, so can we expedite it? And sure enough, a short time later, half the money was deposited into their account. Let's see how soon they get the rest. The Benavides has eventually found out their January check had been sent to someone not even receiving Social Security benefits. Who, well, as soon as he saw that deposit, called them and said, this is not my check. So he didn't touch that money. No, what he did, he returned it to Social Security, so... We thank the Social Security office and the supervisor there for taking care of this, making it a case closed. Hey, if you ever need help from the troubleshooters, all you have to do is send us an email at troubleshooters at kztv10.com. Uh, One local we'll school district is implementing a new radio to system to help in case of an emergency. Asked, uh, Our average response time on a hot call here in town is about 3 minutes and 45 uh, seconds. In an emergency situation, yeah. waiting for 911 to arrive can feel like an eternity. That's why the Aransas Pass Police Department and Aransas Pass ISD are teaming up to narrow response time. So let's put radios in our school. Two-way radios are being placed in each APISD campus as a direct line of communication between police and school administration. This comes just weeks after the school shooting in Colorado. Chief of Police Eric Blanchard says his goal is for his department to respond to an active shooter situation in a timely fashion before anyone is hurt. In Colorado, it took out the middleman being calling 911, speaking to a dispatcher, getting the information, and then it getting relayed to the officers on the street. This will put them directly in contact with the officers on the street. Now, while there's only one walkie-talkie per campus, the police chief says administrators have downloaded an app that works just like a walkie-talkie. 
them and the local police. Right. Eleven principals and vice principals have the app okay. either on their uh, smartphones streets, or computers. You know, and that leads them right directly right into our public safety radio, too. Chief Blanchard encourages administrators to use the radios for any emergency so they can get accustomed to it. So if and when the time comes to use it, every administrator is prepared. So if you have a kid that just took off running down the street, call us on that. Use the radio for that. Get familiar with the equipment. Brenda Matuti, Action 10 News. We want to make sure, though, that St. Gertrude Catholic Elementary School in Kingsville is closing. The diocese cited declining enrollment and growing financial challenges as some of the reasons for the decision. The school will close at the end of this current school year. St. Anthony's Catholic School in Robstown is offering tours and meetings for parents and families of Robstown has been named the worst city in Texas to live in. That's according to an article published in USA Today. The article cites crime rate, unemployment, and the value of homes as just some of the reasons for the rating. But those who live and work in Robstown say they were never contacted for this story, and they also say it's an unfair label. When they're like, sorry, Robstown, it's kind of offensive uh, to most of our folks because there's no apology needed, not from us. We love our town. Meanwhile, city manager Iman Rodriguez adds the crime rate number used in the article is incorrect, and this has been addressed with the FBI and the DPS. He says he doesn't understand why it was still used against the city. At another school across town this morning, a mother ran over her 12-year-old son. This happened at Crockett Elementary. A boy dropped his backpack. He got out of his mom's truck when he did that, and he was trying to pick it up and some papers. His mom didn't see him next to the truck, and then accidentally ran over him as she drove off. Now, in, in a situation like this, what you should do is, is probably get out of the car with your child and make sure that he or she is clear of the vehicle and on their way to class before you decide to take off. Yeah. Fortunately, the youngster's injuries were not life-threatening. He was taken, though, to Driscoll Children's Hospital to be checked out. The Colorado prank delayed the start of the school day at Cal Allen High School this morning. Police were called out to the school after oil was spread on the floor. Some teachers say several items were also wrapped in saran wrap, plus a large banner was hung up in the front of the school that read CHS for sale. The district sent a text message to parents notifying them that students were being kept in the cafeteria while crews cleaned up the mess. At an Action 10 Chief Meteorologist Sharon Ray with your Doppler 10 weather forecast. A storm chaser was caught in a tornado. Dramatic video shows the dangerous storm touching down in Mineola, Kansas, Friday. Now you can see the car approaching the twister as it begins to whip across a field. And then moments later, the tornado picks up speed and eventually reaches the road. Debris and heavy wind starts pounding the car. Now the driver luckily manages to get behind the tornado. Fortunate for him, a very scary situation right there. Back at home, well, we're dealing with wind, but nothing like that. Our wind today was driven by a difference in air pressure from a strong storm system that's inland right now, and that caused that wind to gust as high as 40, and that possibility continues into the evening with sustained winds at 20 to 30. That's why this wind advisory was issued today until 9 o'clock tonight. Then the winds will start to come down a little bit, but it's still going to be pretty breezy out there tonight. Right now, sustained wind speeds are anywhere from about 18 at Rockport to 24 at the NATO Air Station, still close to 30 at uh, Corpus Christi to 24 at Alice. And as we go through the next few days, here is the wind speed and direction forecast. Now, those winds are going to come down a little bit. You can see these are the sustained wind speeds in the afternoons. Still rather breezy and gusts as high as 35 Wednesday. But all in all, I think today was the windiest day that we're going to see for this upcoming week. All that wind pushing the water up to the coastline. And at the same time, we have our higher high tide. That's causing coastal flooding. And we have a coast, coastal flood advisory all across uh, the coastal bend here until 7 o'clock Wednesday morning. So watch for that water high on the beaches, possibly up to the dunes. If you're still going to plan on going to the beach tomorrow to get some relief from this heat, 
Well, it is going to be a rather breezy out there and warm. Temperatures at the beach is reaching the low, even some mid-80s tomorrow, with a moderate rip current risk. That water temperature is like bath water. It's at 82 degrees already, and that is both at Port Aransas and at Bob Hall Pier. Well, you can see the temperatures right now it's, are pretty warm out there. It's 86 at Ingleside right now, 90 at Kingsville. Robstown, you're at 88, 91 at Corpus Christi, but that's not what it feels like. Factor in that humidity, and this is what your body thinks it is out there. 102 is the current heat index in Corpus Christi, and unfortunately, those are still going to be pretty high the next few days. This is the heat index forecast day by day, and that humidity is certainly going to be noticed this week all the way to the end of the week. We start to see those dew points drop a little bit this upcoming weekend, but not enough to make a big difference. It's just going to be hot and sticky out there. And as you know, the humidity keeps our temperatures from dropping at night, so tonight's going to stay warm. We're only dropping into the upper 70s across the area, mostly cloudy. Those breezes coming down a bit tonight, and then tomorrow, dealing with low 90s and that heat index climbing. In fact, here's noon. By the time you head out for lunch tomorrow, that heat index already at 98 degrees. So if you have to do work outdoors tomorrow, just take it easy make sure you drink lots of water in this heat because high temperatures tomorrow do reach anywhere from the mid 80s closer to the coast but you head inland it's in those low to mid 90s for highs tomorrow this is what they're dealing with to our north a massive severe weather outbreak expected it's already in progress and will continue as we head through the evening this is today with that bullseye right over oklahoma and northern texas down to lubbock meanwhile tomorrow that is going to shift to the east unfortunately we're not included in that that's stays to the north. That's the severe risk for tomorrow. But we could see a storm or two, mainly in our north, northwest counties, as this front, this is the culprit causing all that severe weather to our north. Here's future track. That front gradually works its way toward us. We might see an isolated storm to our north as toward Beeville. But overall, the most of the area is going to stay dry. In fact, the front stalls out, starts to move back to the west. And that leaves us right in this hot, humid weather. We just don't see much relief. So with that, here's your seven-day forecast. Expect temperatures peaking close to 90 each day, nights in the upper 70s. No rain in the forecast, really, unless we get one storm tomorrow or two in the area. It's just hot and humid all the way into the weekend. Well, an elementary school in Robstown just put the finishing touches on a new sensory room. And as Chris 6 News reporter Ashley Portillo explains, that room will benefit not only students in the district, but also others who have autism or dyslexia. Mike, the new sensory room at Robert Driscoll Elementary has bubble columns, a sensory wall, and new innovative technology to improve students' motor and communication skills. This is all possible thanks to a $1 million grant the Texas Education Agency awarded Robstown ISD. And Robstown is the pilot district for this effort, and they'll be sharing that money with nine other area school districts. So today, I'll be speaking to a teacher at the school as well as a mother of one of the students who will be using that new room. I'll have that full story for you this evening. Uh, the challenge, I think, is the most exciting part. There's, there's a, a lot of, uh, of uh, there's almost a mandate, I think, from the community for some change and how the city government operates. And so uh, that's the thing that excites me the most. Uh, this is a beautiful city. Uh, my uh, last couple of days here in the downtown area, we, you can uh, kind of sense the ocean is just not too far off. is is, is a real cool thing as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Is there anything else you want to mention? No, I think that's it. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Graduating. Zero seven, I'll head that way as 
Well, it's been a year since the city of Corpus Christi had a permanent city manager. But that role will be filled once again by Peter Zanotti, and we wanted to find out what he plans to focus on. Sunrise reporter Chelsea Torres is live at City Hall this morning. Chelsea, you spoke to Zanotti, so what did he have to say? His son, he spoke about his goals and for this the just in today, purpose. Judge Guy Williams has lost his appeal right to appear two reprimands and against him. What his the panel of three judges like upheld two reprimands issued against Williams Peter by Zanoni the State begins Commission his on Judicial Corpus Conduct Christi back City in manager. December. The decision on today in Austin means that Williams cannot serve as a visiting judge or collective hire. Williams is just four months shy from collecting the hire. meeting with every director to go over their departmental budget plan, which will be beginning in October 1. Zanoni says although today is his first the official day, police are aware of now what the community wants handled and young men. Streets. And they're going one step further uh, the by giving these kids the resources they need to accomplish some of their biggest dreams. Them. But if we have a system in a fairy tale in place, world, uh, a fairy godmother might wave a wand to conjure up the dress of the your dreams. That is in the real world, well, entrepreneur Sam Sasaki is attempting to do just that for young girls we'll around the country. I didn't know that I was Zanoni also to plans to tackle Two years the city's water woes. Two years ago, Sasaki started a non-profit called water Believe in Yourself. Yourself. When it first began, the charity donated brand new dresses that underprivileged girls could wear to school functions. The city of the size of today's modern day age that we're in, there's really no excuse for having those water boils. It was special, you know, receiving the dress, meeting people sure my age, happen, and if that wasn't uh, fairy tale enough, now believe in yourself. And he doesn't plan in a new to direction. stop there. Now other issues that Noni has his eyes on: development so services and public position, safety. Going into his first day, you know, Noni admits he's feeling the pressure, player, but wants to make the wrongs right and earn your trust. Uh, trust is critical. I want the community to know that I'm here to help them. This is a deliberate choice that I've taken. Believe in yourself has young people set a goal that correlates with whatever their dream is, and then provides them now with Peter the resources Zanoni says and mentorship that his biggest to succeed. Right now, short term, is looking at the organization as a whole. He says he will be meeting with all directors here at City Hall for his first meeting this morning. I'm going to find a full interview as well as more information on Peter Zanoni on our website, mistreatment.com. And how this organization is based out of a rare disease, but it's planning from being healthy to paralyzed in just a matter of weeks. Actually, too, it's an illness that could be triggered by something as simple as the end of this summer. Or if you know a young person who might qualify for the program, you can contact the organization at leavingyourself.org. We have a link to the organization on our website, pztv10.com. And tell us how to keep it from Friday happening. Friday Matuti, Action 10 News. Hi, good morning, Action 10, Chief and Meteorologist Sharon Ray with your Doppler 10 weather forecast. This disease, there is no cure. Well, yesterday we hit 89, today 90 in Corpus Christi. That's above average. The normal was 87 this time of year. And look at our morning low, only 76. And we're in for more of that as we go into the next couple of days. Uh, right now, the temperature is still holding at 86 degrees. We've got a partly sunny sky. It feels like at 95 due to the humidity, which is fine. Remember yesterday, we saw then your body well, is 75 now, no and then the cause, is coming I'll up, and it's going to stay that way into the weekend, and even next week. Therefore, we have peak indices. Why do we show you these? Well, because it's the feels-like temperature when we combine temperature and humidity, and it's harder for our bodies to cool down when we have more humidity in the air. It's harder for that moisture to evaporate off our skin, and therefore, it's you have to find a way to keep yourself cool the higher these numbers are, and these are in the 90s right now. We saw the heat the index up to 99 earlier today in Corpus Christi. In the right face. now it's at 95 or 99 at the Naval Air Station. You can have so as we uh, look at the wind, though, that's been helping vision. us stay you can a little have difficulties You get out in the breeze, so it doesn't feel quite as bad. And we do have those wind speeds that did come up today as expected. We see them now at 22 miles an hour. Those are sustained winds in Corpus Christi and 18 at Robstown. So the breeze stays up pretty steady tonight. Lows, it's not known to be fatal. We stay in the 70s all across. Into upper 70s for lows tonight. Fatigue. A lot of low clouds moving through and a steady breeze time. tonight. Tomorrow, we well, the temperatures weaken as we make it to so noon, red 83 degrees. And in the afternoon, reaching the mid to upper 80s. Again, tomorrow, there is no known cure for this disease, this but there are treatments like. that so could help with this symptom. Those uh, very warm uh, feels like temperatures again tomorrow, but high temperatures up to 88 Corpus Christi, 89 Kingsville, 82 at Rockport tomorrow. And the wind, the wind is going to be even gustier than it was today. Today. To find It'll be out rather strong at times, so you'll notice on. that breeze Sunrise from the southeast. Is You're live heading to the beaches. I do expect some sunshine at the you beaches tomorrow, but there'll also be a lot of clouds, especially early. 
and the rip current risk is Crystal low. Will be the stuck water for about 10 minutes, mainly on his goals for the city since of yesterday. Corpus Christi, as well as what he intends to do, to gain the trust of the well, community, and not only that, but also what his plans so look like for the next few days. The temperatures stay in those upper 80s to 90 degrees. These are the forecast highs in his red bars here. First on his list, the indicates what it's going to be like, and I do think Monday we could see some of those heat indices climbing to about 100 degrees. So certainly, we've got to stay cool this time of year. It's that time when we're going to be talking a lot about that. Well, as far as thunderstorms, we're not going to see too much in the way of rain in the next week or so. There is a chance tomorrow because of this storm system. It is going to bring widespread storms to the Midwest and to the Lone Star State tomorrow, especially as it moves to the east. For us, we are going to miss most of that. We're on the tail edge of that front, and I don't think we're going to see too much in the way of rain tomorrow. But you notice to the north, there's an enhanced risk of severe weather. This is a severe weather chance, so if you have plans to head to North Texas, even up to Austin or eastward, to ensure everything is in place. The city of the size could be severe. For us, though, we're just on the edge, and our better chances of rain, the farther north you live, the better chance you have of seeing some of those storms, and that's mainly in the afternoon to early evening, although we can't rule out a shower And he doesn't plan to stop there. All right, here is your seven-day forecast, and this is brought to you by Auto Nation Super Zero Event. Get new cars and trucks with absolutely zero do it signing. Visit Auto Nation to make the wrongs right. So the next earth, three days, we trust. see those temperatures hovering in the upper 80s to near 90 by Monday. It's going to be windy again uh, Monday. Sunday, winds die down a little, but Monday they pick up again, uh, gusts to uh, 35. Next week, we stay very uh, very stagnant here. It's now, Peter Zanoni says his biggest focus short-term is looking at the organization as a whole. He says he wants to make sure the city of Corpus Christi is functioning at its full potential in his first meeting today. We'll have all the directors here at City Hall. His full interview on our Hi. website later on today. The here County Hager Cottage Sanctuary, Sanctuary Pavilion. Fun day, fun day. Took down a whole new meeting for now children in the court appointed special Tomorrow advocates program. First, Casa arranged a tour of the Harbor Playhouse. With then, the children saw production of Peter Pan from behind the scenes. Chris Six News reporter Jeremiah Marshall tells us days like these make all the difference for these children. Historical Commission says there are. Greg volunteers with Casa say these children need experiences like this. We think Connie's a really good model for young women. And and girls, girls today because she was Neverland. willing to do something Each that time it is our men goal were doing open at the time. Our and in the 30s and 40s, um, there were no into women a space that they may have not been before. For many of these so children she really that are part of foster care, care, taking a part in a live musical Edgar production is something bird. that many have That's never true. been a part yeah, of. And with the production of Peter Pan, they were able to get an inside look at the different costumes, stage design, to even creating their own Peter Pan look. What we try to do in events like this is just open up their minds and expose the children to things that Maybe have firefighters and good Samaritans. Cost of volunteers also for say when the children get to come like and take part of these different outings, was they really enjoy their visits. Cost of volunteers also say who knows, that certain activities could inspire their future. Oh, they talk about it all the time. My cost of child still talks about the children going to the aquarium last year. And that was a great experience for her. She learned a lot, had a great time, and plus she got to see other children who were visiting her as well. Here well, at the Harbor Playhouse, are very passionate about, about having children learn about theater because theater is not just something that, that is for entertainment, it is something that can help children the build their creativity and develop growth. And so that is what we're happy to have them here doing today. Staff with the Harbor Playhouse say Peter Pan started April 26th and will run till June 2nd. Members with Casa also say they are always looking for volunteers. To see how you can be a part of Casa, you can head to our website at christv.com. Great. Andy Lascano has all the scores accurate weather forecast in South Texas. This is your Action Just One Cops report. Brought to you by very good Chubby's Sunday Mattress, afternoon. where There's there's no limit to what a man and, and a dog can do. I'll what, we've had plenty do. of wind for today. It's been plenty warm, too. We should call it hot because heat indices reached the triple digits for many locations. But the winds, they were not bad today. They were on the breezy side, but they're going to continue to pick up as we head into the uh, uh, upcoming work week all throughout the week. In fact, we have a coastal flood advisory in effect for all coastal locations uh, that are facing the Gulf, and that goes until 7 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. So Fort Aransas will experience a high tide at 7.58 and Bob Hall Pier at 6.57, and the water is expected to reach the dunes. In fact, going about two and a half feet above sea level there. So use caution with 
that minor uh, tidal flooding going on. And there is also a gale watch in effect all the way through Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock. A gale watch means that seas could go up to about 10 feet and about 30 to 40 knot winds are going to be expected with the increasing winds that are headed to the coastal bend. And because those winds are coming right off the water, our dew points, they are just aggressively high out there. And as soon as you walk outdoors, it really hits you like a ton of bricks. As the dew points all across the coastal bend are nearing 80 degrees, that is just unheard of. And it feels like 103 out at the Naval Air Station, the Century Mark out in Orange Grove, Kingsville, you're included, almost out in Alice and Mathis as well near San Diego too, but 104 is what it feels like for our friends down in Falfuria. So if you are hoping and praying and fingers crossed that we will get those dew points to come down, it is not going to happen, unfortunately. They're going to stay in the middle to upper 70s on Monday and Tuesday, and yes, even on Wednesday and Thursday as well. Those dew points are expected to stay elevated. Satellite radar composite shows the clouds escaping us, but there will be some low level clouds that will start to reform as we head into the overnight hours. Look at the some clearing skies off to the west of us, but again, those are expected to fill in. Because of the clouds in place and Crazy conditions now with those east southeast really winds. Those temperatures the are not going to fall a whole lot for tonight. In fact, by uh, 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning, we'll still be holding on to those clouds. Southeast really winds 10 to 15. And, coming up and tonight, overnight with, lows only expected to fall at 79 degrees here. Similar America values near the coastline right and into the, the middle to upper 70s for our inland communities. So for tomorrow, we start off warm and stuffy, hot, windy, and humid by noontime already. 86 at the lunchtime hour and 88 feeling like 100 plus degrees at 5 o'clock with those southeasterly yeah, winds already anywhere between town, 20 to 30 miles an hour. So the 80s to low 90s near the coastline and middle to lower 90s for that. our inland They're communities. Believe it or not, we actually have a weak frontal boundary up to the north, but it is going to run into this wall of wind that is going to be going up out of the southeast and meeting that front. That's going to push it back up to the north. That is not going to be headed in our direction, unfortunately. And even the frontal boundary off to the west of us associated with the large upper level storm system is going to get pushed because it's going to run into this high pressure ridge. And it's just upper level lows that are going to be off to the west of us all week long that is going to keep those winds very elevated here. So in fact, windy for Monday and Tuesday, and even on into Wednesday and Thursday as well. We'll hold on to partly cloudy skies, windy conditions, and very, very humid as well. NHC Co-op Energy 7 Day Forecast tonight, tomorrow 93 on Tuesday, a couple of 91s for Wednesday and Thursday. Each day, heat indices will be about a 95 to 105 degrees. So highs above normal, lows above normal, and look at those being in the only bottom right. out into the upper 70s <laughs> this to lower Stay with us. Jeff Dubois is popular next. Live bait. The Croker Soakers saw firsthand how Our Hurricane Harvey changed we're going to their stay community. Hot and dry but the for same much. can't be said uh, for babes on the bay. I don't think ahead. it's changed the tournament at all. I think it's been great to get people back to Rockport. Um, things have changed as far as morning, the amount of places to stay and, and eat, and eat and but I don't think that's park stopped park any of the ladies. Our weather has been pretty quiet, but boy, that has not been the case across the parts of North Texas, the Central Plains, and it's the peak of tornado season. We're really grateful to have so many people who love this one, town so much. Uh, that showed up yes, well, so yesterday morning Texas, over but there are in Abilene. You can see it well. did do the quite a bit of damage. The school and suffered gear a lot of damage and uh, one the of the portables out. there That's almost Saturday nearly Saturday. destroyed, Reporting. but fortunately no Graduation is a special time. injuries being no reported. Age or the place, We're looking at 80 degrees right now, some cloudy skies. Winds are in the south, east at 10 miles per hour. 80 in Beeville, 78 in Alice, Kingsville at 80 Degrees. Visibility is this morning down to exactly about two, two miles an hour. It's about three now. in there Orange Grove, up in the Beeville area, Rockport this morning. We can have some visibility about four miles. Now the wind has tapered off. Boy, it was windy on our Saturday. Today we're looking for just your usual sea breeze blowing in about ten to 15 miles per hour, but Communities that's and school it, site because coordinator the wind Gonzales definitely says coming a recurring back issue as we I'm head into your Every Monday year, there's afternoon. A batch of students We're going to see it blowing anywhere between 20 to 25 miles per hour, gusting to around 35 miles per hour. Is to try and help per hour. Now we are seeing a little bit of clear skies, but the clouds and fog also. Now the only real showers here in Lone Star State started up in the Del Rio area and now dropping down to 
through the south a bit, which in a but way the, we are, here's but the big line it's not that moved through these North Texas yesterday. That's now pushing across day. parts of the lower got Mississippi Valley, and, and uh, this is going to be one of the prime spots today. Some money has been donated, but Gonzalo says there are still about 30 kids without. This going to also trigger more of those thunderstorms, so the Storm Prediction Center has put the best chance of showers across portions of the panhandle, but the threat for the big thunderstorms, Action, possible tornadoes, that moves up to the north All right, of the Ohio Valley Miller High School and student the their cap and down. You can visit our website, KZTV10.com, for information. And by the way, a bit more whatever additional also, money is collected from Monday, the for next students. storm system will be passing the on by are helping on Tuesday. Families at the Ronald Just McDonald House like of Corpus Christi, today we were the hockey club gave the organization a check for $6,500. That's probably what's going to happen with this next one also. We are seeing some cooler temperatures behind this in the 40s and 50s. We're still warm across the much of the southeast. Two areas we're watching. The big one right here, the threat of storms, severe weather moving in across parts of uh, Mississippi and these storms extending up into the upper Ohio Staff Valley. Staff at a local middle Next school are being honored for their very help helping students for this time of year. Coming in Happy off the Middle West School coast, is only one of two schools in the city to have the advanced the Sierra, via Nevada's individual determination or AVID to the west, program. This national this morning, program helps in students with their studies and also gives them a glimpse into what life would be like as a college student. Here, and it that really prepares students for college and anything that they seek in the future. It really prepares them to be successful. Any they sunny they and warm. Take. Looking for a it gives them great study skills, organization, Tonight, has them cloudy, mild, take leadership roles in their classes degrees, and anything that they're involved in, in school to you or by outside NEC school. Co-op Energy. Happy Middle no School will now serve forecast. as a model for other schools and districts that are tomorrow. interested in implementing AVID. Now to some really good news for students and staff over in the field. Crews have started working on both the gyms for a few of junior high and high school. As many of you may recall, both gyms and the high school were heavily damaged during Hurricane Harvey. Back here at home, over the 10,000 runners years, laced up their shoes for the 44th annual Beast to Bay Relay Marathon. Uh, that was definitely ISD enough to kick their cardio practice. into high gear. Well, and if runners so went past their limits, medical staff was on standby to help. So, so what are the signs of distress they look for not once to be on the road the finish and not line? Have to have the Here's Chris Reporter traveling. Jeremiah Marshall the gym should be finished by the end of August. When running Beast to Bay at every leg, you can find one of these, a huge white tent filled with ice, and of course, Robberies Medical is in jail. 41-year-old Mike Simo Salinas recently arrested, charged with aggravated robbery and evading arrest. We're told he also had four warrants for his arrest. Cops believe he's responsible for robbing at least five convenience stores, piece, and in each case, he reportedly got away with an unknown some, amount of cash. Yet registered nurses to physical and respiratory therapists along with more medical well, I should say news has learned that the uh, crime line, of the week the has been solved. Faint, Police tell us they've arrested 18 year old Davis Spencer. They believe he's the man sleep, who was caught on camera also stealing a tool set from a hardware store earlier this month. Skills for the say it's important to note that the South Texas humidity Harper can sneak up on you while you run. Going against the heat can be health. another obstacle. Police twelve. Here are the key the things way. about running. Action is, 10 News is learning well new information about the man who was found dead in San Patricio County. According to the medical examiner who did the autopsy on 27 year old Alfredo Vasquez, he was fatally shot. The San Patricio County Sheriff's Office believes Vasquez was shot somewhere else because the community body was left in a creek just west of Portland. Pipeline workers discovered his body say each morning. year they treat about six to a seven hundred high runners at their asking tents. for the community they help. Well, how they're walking, up, um, if they now, have a stumble or if they stumble across Moody the finish line, that school. will trigger us to Don't pull them into the tent. Volunteers and runners say getting your body prepared for any running event is crucial. Graduation is a special time. This is a matter of your age or the place. The main thing is getting to that finish line and handing off that baton to the next guy. You don't want to go down the pathway to pay for their cash. Jeremiah Marshall, Chris Six News. And here are some numbers from today's race. Medical volunteers with Beach exactly Bay say 536 people were seen by medics. Three were actually taken to the hospital, one for a migraine, another for chest pain, and the third for heat exhaustion. Now, the Coastal Bend Sports Authority, Alan Harwell, with your Chris Six Sports Report. 
a lot of our kids Hi, good evening, homeless. everybody. A Communities big night of both school high school baseball and softball playoff action going on all over South Texas. Over Capitol Field, a hot for them from being able to buy what they need. And she says as a counselor, her duty is to try and help them. And the cotton pickers threaten in the first. The cotton pickers threaten in the first. Chris Salamis will hit the right field and check this out. Talk about some hustle here. He's going to turn a would-be single into an uncle. Yeah, he is safe at second base. That got the big crowd going, but he would wind up being stranded at second base. Now, second inning now. Pickers threatening again. Someone got wind of these kids' financial situation and blasted the call for help on social media. Some money has been donated, but Gonzalez says there are still about 30 kids without. And Chris Garcia lays down the perfect tag for the out. Sitton has scored three runs in the sixth to take a 5-3 to three lead. The game has just gone final, and the Pirates the hang on. Matini, they win it 5-3, so game two tomorrow, 5 o'clock, game three. All right, right. want to help our Miller High School student by their capital. Yeah, really, you can visit our website, crazywinnertake.com, for information. And by the way, whatever additional money is collected, the Calabrese cast students on scheme. Jeff E. Brough is there. Enjoy it. Chief Meteorologist Sharon Ray with your Doppler Yeah, Alan Callahan looking to get to the region. Good afternoon. Final, Here we are heading into the end of the week. We're still in dealing with way. a lot Let's of heat and humidity, and that is not going to go today. away anytime soon. Three right now, we are at 85 degrees at the Naval Air Station. Corpus Christi up to 87 degrees. We hit 80 degrees today. And Port Aransas at 82. Feeling the heat toward the west with 90 degrees right now at Alice. So as we go overnight, we are only going to drop into those low to mid 70s tonight. It's going to stay warm in Monday night. And we'll have that breeze going up to about 12 miles an hour. Also, some low clouds coming in. Partly cloudy night. That this is catchy fog possible. Temperatures down to 74 for Corpus Christi. Wild get closer to the beaches in the mid 70s runs, tonight the and lower 70s in our Look inland areas. This is staying huge. warm all night, giving us a muggy morning out, and a very warm and humid afternoon tomorrow. Baseman, as temperatures climb again, the difference tomorrow says, do will be the wind is going to be a little stronger. So we'll have more gusts with those southeast winds up to approaching 30 miles an hour at times. Sustained winds tomorrow close to 18 miles an hour in the afternoon. Afternoon, so a little more windy tomorrow, and we'll tournament. see those Alan feels like all right, Jeff, we had thank today you. up to about 94, 95 they degrees. Also in fact, their one game playoff These are the forecast high temperatures then for your so Friday. Temperatures reaching 91 for Alice, 90 Beeville, 89 Robstown, and up to 88 at Corpus Christi. Heading to the beaches, well, it's going to be fairly warm out there with readings in the lower 80s with 82 degrees at Corpus Christi tomorrow. As we'll see those winds though picking up a little bit tomorrow and even more Saturday. Saturday, I still think we'll see some gusts most up of that to 35 is miles an hour. Stay well Sunday, north, the winds come back down. Sunday looks like a pretty good day to get outdoors, but then we see that wind increasing again for the beginning the of next week from the southeast. As of we're dealing with some Texas changes in the wind, the, the humidity is not going to change. In fact, so it even comes up even more. We're looking at dew points in the middle of the upper 70s as we head into next week. So over the next couple of days, we just sit in that very humid air here in the coastal bend. Notice to the north, there's some right now we're looking here at 80 degrees, so it's warm out there, front, some cloudy for us, skies, we never breezy, quite get the winds are in the south, 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 miles per hour, now we do have an approaching system from the Pacific, but we're going to be missed by the main punch with this, in fact, this storm system is going to track across the central U.S., bringing severe weather and quite a bit of storm activity for us, we're going to be on the very south end of that, and most of us are going to be missed by it, and that would be Saturday, you can see though, on our future track, it's very similar to what I showed the past better. couple we'll of days. Storms in the states of the north, but a few about 10 to may develop. The air is going to be very unstable of the Saturday. Winds, we do However, the, the better chance of seeing those storms awesome getting going is going to be north toward there because Victoria. High tides are going to be For us, we're looking at the potential of a few. I'm leaving those in the normal. forecast, and whatever does develop uh, could be pretty strong. But farther to the north, Saturday, here at 7 o'clock in the evening, you can see storms continuing to pull in the northeast Texas and then pulling out. And anything left Sunday is really early in the morning, the mainly north of us, and I think Sunday is going to be a mainly are dry day across the area. Uh, us, so we do no, have a severe storm potential in much of northern and northeast Texas, but notice we're just on the edge of that. As I mentioned, uh, if we do we'll see a storm see a getting going Saturday storm. late in the day, there's the potential we could have some strong wind or hail with that. So the weekend forecast is very warm. We'll call it hot by Sunday as we approach 90 degrees, and the heat index Sunday up to 99. If we do see any rain, it's going to be very the breeze will help cool us down, though, a little bit. Here's a seven-day forecast. Very warm and humid chance of storms late Saturday, but it's a pretty dry forecast. Warm. Only isolated storms so possible Tuesday. And look at those 90s as we head into next week.
week. Uh, extending hot all the way up right in the Abilene the area, Wichita Falls, the and then across the upper Midwest. And where, yes, we're even seeing there, snow behind that front. So, a late season winter like storm for the folks in the Rockies. Billings right now, 37 degrees. That's right where Denver was last hour, but they've warmed up to 42. Well, it's going to be very warm and humid across much of the southeast. For us, fun things to do. It breaks down just like this. Put Put away the slight chance keep in those the afternoon. Stylish bowling Daytime shoes high, on the right around 87 now. degrees. Like Night look for mostly for cloudy and mild. Late We're going to see an overnight low of 75 but degrees. Your seven-day well forecast tomorrow, is brought to you by NEC Co-op Energy. So it's going to be windy rain. today. Yeah, less wind on Sunday, a little bit more sunshine. Then we're going to be stuck in a very hot and humid and windy weather pattern for much of the next week ahead. We've got a lot more coming up on Sunday. Stay with us. And out on the ring, resurfaced the following Hurricane Harvey Dan to force the old owners out. The building went up for lease, and we saw a boy Hi, in this area in this community. Avoid Victoria Ruiz wants to film. Going on and why not? The experienced Texas. skater runs over a rink by the same name in Annaville. She and her best friend lease the rink in around this past. And after four months of renovations, it's time for DJ to start spinning tunes again. We had many customers from our other locations ask to come open up. A a a and a and so that's single what we into did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, some competition for entertainment base, dollars in a race past. Hurricane Harvey also destroyed the bowling alley that filled this lot. But by the end of the year, the city expected to be rebuilt. And for the first time in recent memory, the city's getting a movie theater already under construction, set for a late summer opening. It's unusual in a smaller town like Harvey to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. It's unusual in a smaller town to have three location sites in one area. A couple cool, of really man. big There's even more fun to be had once again. Take all again affairs in high school pass. softball. Hurricane Harvey also places. damaged the city's Beaver, aquatic center, but it's also now repaired. The now repaired. Jeff at the facility there, with joins pools, water slides, and more. Action, Jeff, is set to reopen. Yeah, Alan weekend. Cal Allen looking to get to the regional final, but a good Seguin Matador team in now their way. Let's check out the highlights from Beville today. Teresa Lentz's team, they've been rolling. They swept their last round and looking to make it to the regional final, but Seguin's good. Good. They play tough, campaign. and early on, and Lizette Dell and Hell on the mound. Ball gets the away the from Allie Wiggins, Wiggins and Caitlin Guzman. The score on the pass ball, 1-0 Seguin. And right here, look at this, Jasmine Pena saving some runs with a sports center top 10 diving grab. That was a great play, saving a lot of runs, that would be huge. Wildcats took a while to score some runs. And a couple more wheel of change fugitives are this in jail tonight. Huge. The Oasis County Reagan Sheriff's Office confirms that shot Homie Gilbert and Monica Martinez were recently arrested. And with two outs, Although the wheel never Lizette actually Dallas landed says, on I'll either one. But myself. since this wheel two of shame claim shot. began, the left, police have arrested 345 people. And the Wildcats would not get rid of their lead after that. They win this one. Final score, four to two. Hi They're everyone, I'm Captain Monica from the Noises County Sheriff's Office. All right, it's Jeff, Wheel of Shame Wednesday. Let's we'll see who the Parks and Wheels is going to be. Your chance to get some one extra one cash. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel. Spring, Into the Noises County's top ten most wanted fugitives. Whatever fugitive wheel lands on Crime Stoppers will increase our reward to $500 for one month. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. And the wheel will win it on Joey Gilbert and Monica Martinez. Her date of birth is May 28, 1980. She's approximately 5'3", 140 pounds, with blonde hair and green eyes. If you have any information where we can locate Joe Beth Everett or any of the fugitives on our wheel, please call Crime Stoppers at 888 CIPS. For a complete list of all noises counties, top 10 most wanted fugitives, go to KZTV10.com. He can run really well. He's a tremendous leader, but despite having that complete package, Nearly a decade has passed since a body was dumped near the J.C. Elliott landfill, and the killer uh, has never been caught. The body of Alejandro Alex Valera was dumped along Greenwood back in May of 2009. He had been shot several times. Detectives are hoping someone has new information that will lead to the capture of Alex's killer. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers at 888 CIPS and arrest him for you at Cash Reward. Speaking of court dates, a chef who served three meals right, grabbed the rest of the way to the Hurricane Harvey, Harvey was in court today. Thanks to Billy Joe Wilson, who was recently indicted on a couple of counts of 
that fact, because our website this morning, but his attorney was a hey, one of the best so the judge told him, Kyle Allen, come back basketball week history. With Ethan Martinez signed today to play with Wilson Stein with a quarter round. The point guard was called the scoring champion in District 29 5A this year. He averaged 22.3 points per game. An arrest warrant has been issued for a woman who was a no-show for the court today. Tammy Showbar was to be arraigned today on charges related to a fatal hit and run. Very happy to have him. Oh, yeah. Police say Showbar was driving on Highway 181 near North Beach when she hit and killed a man who was walking on the shoulder of the road. Showbar will be held without bond when she is arrested. And tonight we're giving a thumbs up to Incarnate Word Academy senior Joseph Nick. Well, several Today, students over in Ingleside have tested positive for the flu. According to the school the nurse at Berkovich Elementary, in just more than a week, five kids tested positive. Over at so teachers are trying to do what they can to prevent the spread right there. of the flu. Joseph, another one. Joseph plans to earn a bachelor's and graduate degree in civil engineering. And the parents are being told they keep the kids at home if they're not feeling well. The man found dead in a creek was murdered. That's a According to the, the most accurate weather forecast in the South Texas, with Chief Meteorologist Bill Nelson. Pipeline workers yesterday morning. And the, the weather is going to make that beach of Bayron tomorrow morning very challenging because of, of the wind and humidity. Temperatures are going to be high, and the heat in index will be up around 90 degrees. We'll start at 80 uh, in the morning at 7, 82 at 9 a.m. and 86. The wind will increase the humidity and make it a little bit tough. This is going to be a following wind most of the way off your right shoulder. 82 degrees, by the way, at Packery Channel on our, as we had our enough seawater temperature there. there. As far as what's happening the day, with the uh, situation out in the Gulf, we have in, higher than normal tides on area beaches to get out with about, persistent easterly winds up. causing fact, uh, a coastal in those flood 80s, advisory and, and minor tidal flooding at Port of Ranches at 512 in the morning, Bob Hall Pier at 456 in the morning, so a little higher water than normal. Small craft advisory through 9 a.m. that will certainly be extended to later in the day. Satellite so we do have some low clouds in the area, but no rain. We had a couple sprinkles For now, though, it's no pretty dry. We did see a couple pretty much of tiny showers popping up, and again, it's just to the north here. Showers. Overnight these forecast very, calls very for upper 70s to, to east, hold right on through 4 a.m. And uh, on right into daybreak, where the winds will still be at 15 to 20 miles an hour then. And that's what's going to keep our temperatures up. We'll be lucky to get down to 78 degrees tonight. And then the temperatures take off as do the winds in the morning. Forecast lows, upper 70s. Wind, as over I mentioned, the eastern hasn't half of the area and mid 70s further the east, very the humid here and on the breezy to windy side 78 to 7 tomorrow at noon, just uh, but a starting to become gusty and 86 Friday mostly Saturday. cloudy the at 5 p.m. and around heat index south, well into the 90s high temperatures tomorrow will dial it down a couple of degrees from today's low 82 in Port Aransas 83 in Rockport but 91 in Fall Furious where they had 92 today we had a high of 90 for the fifth time this year hitting that magical mark Dropping down to the lower 70s, with near 70 in our inland in areas tonight. Big tomorrow, cluster of thunderstorms well, it's going to be working very off warm to the and north humid. and east towards Dallas. Climbing. A little more than today, a little, today. Off a little bit higher there. up there. More as as we see expected 87 up in that region. That's the reason for the wind there. and this and area low pressure. As that moves over towards the upper Midwest, it runs into that chilly air. More storms tomorrow in the Missouri River Valley and the Plain State. That's why we'll have the wind. But once it goes by, our winds will come down. There's the enhanced severe weather threat. In northeast and Texas Robson tomorrow from around uh, San Antonio for the beach and indeed. Austin, north uh, the and east through Dallas up into Texarkana, College State, so the waves slight risk down to B County, foot marginal risk into San Patricio and Recurio County. But again, not a big deal for us because of too much wind. Now, Here it is. Again, a stray yeah. shower really in the morning, but nothing uh, heavy at all. And uh, then we'll see everything get blown away with the wind tomorrow afternoon, feeding those big storms up to the north. Clouds on Sunday morning will give way to afternoon sunshine. And a lot of heat. The wind it. forecast, the weekend not forecast good for then is going to be humid. Much better and we on have Sunday. The That's your day, Mariners storms, and golfers. Windy again on Monday. Late Saturday, windy. And then again into Sunday morning. This hasn't changed since yesterday. And I was talking and about this yesterday. And it's all yesterday. because of low the pressure. Still again, looks good not on bad here once we get to tomorrow night and Sunday. As our storm system sitting out to the west, this cold front will gradually work its way in our direction. And that is just simply not good for light winds here at the surface. All right, 78 tonight, 87 tomorrow, 76 and 90 on 
on could Sunday, pick up pretty a good day. Of spot storms. And then hot, Notice humid, and windy Monday through Friday the majority of next week, of the rain and only a sprinkle of our area. Uh, in That's the for forecast. The best so again, no meaningful our rainfall. Is low, but uh, really, there. for the next Late seven days, we'll pick up an isolated shower, too. very, very light unstable uh, here in the morning. That's not going to affect the beach today in any significant way. Into Sunday morning, better be ready. And then it looks like by Sunday late. Good evening, everyone. As we get ready for the start of another hurricane season, the long-term recovery from Hurricane Harvey. So in the seven-day forecast, now, one organization that's been heavily involved in that effort is the Coastal Bend Disaster Recovery Group. And since the storm, it's taken on hundreds of projects and helped dozens of families who lost their homes. So as we go through day by day here, we'll see that the temperatures stay quite warm. She joins us here in the studio tonight with her report. Back into those upper 80s, with 89 possible on Friday. It truly takes a public private partnership to keep the Coastal Bend Disaster Recovery Group going. And through that coordination, families like the Leals have a brand new start after Harvey. And while the group celebrates the milestones, next week, their work is best chance of seeing storms. That comes Tuesday, and it's going to start off. But it's a far cry from what Juan Carlos and Elizabeth Leal thought when they came back after Hurricane Harvey's landfall and saw the devastation. But as their intake numbers grow, so does their need to accommodate every one of their residents. And after deciding to stay, the Leal's road to recovery got off to a rocky start after a home visit from a FEMA representative. Right now, Executive Director Carol Murphy says their biggest need is pillows and bedding. Then eight months later, an unexpected phone call changed everything. It was from the Coastal Bend Disaster Recovery Group. I wouldn't know you need help. <laughs> really need help. FEMA gave us 84,000 people who made claims in the Coastal Bend, and we started calling. Really Executive Director Warren Murphy Fitz says, says those calls got the ball rolling for disaster case managers, case managers like Corbin Seidel, who helped the Leals, to determine what the needs are. You know, we gave them a house, but like you said earlier, they have made this all. We're able through private donations to help complete the home. And with the manual labor from several volunteer groups, including the Mennonite Disaster Service. She expects a good Samaritan Rescue Mission to be operating in the area. Amazing things are happening in Rockport with these people. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by the Hurricane Harvey. The Mennonite Disaster Service is a nonprofit organization that provides support to families affected by
The I economy said, no, is much is less right. dependent That's on trade with China than China's reaction. economy the is County's dependent on trade with the United Christie. States. She owns and he is hopes renovated. these tariffs by the, the Trump administration will make the trade with China better. However, a protracted That's trade war is not going to be good for anybody. We are confident that this administration will reach a with China. It just is some short-term payments for some long-term gains. Ninety thousand dollars on a property that is not even legal. And Strawbridge also talked about the imports from China, and we also know that. China also manufactures 90% of the products that are bought here in the United States, and those include electronics to apparel, to even footwear. Can only evaluate your home from According the to outside, estimates by the National Retail Federation, the average household would be spending as much as $2,300 a year more if all the tariffs threatened by China actually do go into effect. Good evening, everyone. It has been more than a year since Corpus Christi had a permanent city manager. Now, that changes on Monday, which will be Peter Zanoni's first day at work as the new city manager. Ali Cassetti got the chance to speak with him this morning and talk about what's on his agenda. She joined us now, and Ali, he's apparently done quite a bit of prep work for his first day. Hey, sure has, Lee. Peter Zanoni told me he's already had some interaction with the community. Ted Starr has helped him get a better idea of what Corpus Christi expects and needs. Tomorrow's deadline is simply to file that appeal. I'm all about getting things done, and so we need to deliver. As day one nears, Peter Zanoni is more than ready to hit the ground running. Those are great Coming into to a show new city with many new faces, he thought it was a good idea and to so hear what the community had to say. Getting input from the community, um, I'm hearing a lot well, from the community uh, ever since I began the interview the process, and uh, getting their expectations Hurricane and, and their individual uh, uh, needs uh, the coastal will be helpful in me establishing the goals of the city. Some of those expectations had helped Zanoni set a list of priorities as a new city manager. Those include improving the city's development services department, the city has been waiting on roads, Keeping a safe to water supply back and getting nonprofits to collaborate to help. Our city has worked diligently. And in just the, the few days he's been in the, the city, he has become well aware of the condition our streets and roads are in. Dealing with the drive by uh, dealing with insurance, uh, dealing with everybody out there and uh, so the disaster relief. Answering those happen. questions about streets and, uh, will be a challenge. And the city understands there will be many more challenges. But he told me that's half the reason why he fully implies that there's a lot to do in Corpus Christi. That's one of the reasons why I took the job. Uh, there's a lot of uh, meantime, challenges the that the community is asking to uh, be addressed. Uh, if it was an easier type job, I probably wouldn't have uh, had much interest. Sunday morning, the morning will be meeting with the town's top 50 department leaders to discuss shared goals, visions, and expectations. That meeting is set for the 8.30 a.m. Thank you, ma'am. By the way, salaries for past city managers have averaged about $220,000 a year. City Council offers it only an annual base salary of $300,000. And also receive stipends for car and work on plus moving expenses. Well, this is the last weather that forecast in South Texas with up, Chief and, uh, Meteorologist Bill Nelson. Up over here and we Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Here is your Aztec Chevrolet forecast. Well, I want to mention the coastal flood advisory has been extended to 1 o'clock tomorrow for higher than normal water on area beaches. High tide of Port Aransas, 412. I checked at 512 in the morning, 456 in the morning at Bob Hall Pier. So the tides are going to come up a little bit. The body of a young man was found in a small creek near Portland. We were told pipeline workers found the body at around 8.30 this morning. The San Patricio County Sheriff's Office is waiting waters, on the medical but, uh, examiner again, a little bit to perform of an effect an autopsy. Here, but not much. And the rip current Former risk is going to be high. You know, if you're going to the beach this weekend, Academy especially on Sunday, watch out for the rip currents. All right, satellite and radar shows no meaningful rain. We did have a couple of little showers earlier today around noon. They have passed on and low clouds remain. Our evening forecast, a mix of clouds and sun, figuring the clouds through sunset, upper 70s through midnight, holding in the upper 80s all the way through 6 a.m. South-southeasterly winds breezy. The hunt is on for the people who killed two tonight. brothers near Texas A&M -like University, with, uh, Kingsville. Along Investigators the coast of say Adan Birial and Jose Birial from Alice were shot in the apartment Freer complex and just and also last night. Bevel. We'll start at 78, warm and muggy in the morning. Windy and humid, no winds really pick up Jim Wells at 84 County, at noon, County, noon and 86, but mostly cloudy at really 5 p.m. Heat index low well into the 90s. Tomorrow, today we had a heat index that topped out at 100 degrees here in Corpus Christi. Highs tomorrow will be a little bit lower than today's 90 because of the cloud cover and the wind with the influence of the 82 degree seawater temperature. 82 will be the high in Port Aransas tomorrow, ranging to 91 around Fremont and Hebronville. We'll see 87. And the mentality. 
challenge. Again, they don't have a voice. Potential coming Melissa out of Keller the is disabled. Area in Del Rio, so that, she uses the public transportation in Beville to get herself that around. Are spread into and for the, the past four years, she says, Rail Texas Transit has been reliable. And she has a standing the schedule here. where her reservation we is the same each week. On all that she at says at now as she's being picked up late more frequently. Low pressure will deepen in the Rockies, and that'll make it for windy conditions tomorrow. As that moves off to the east, so our winds will relax for one day. For all of this area, low pressure out here to the west gets going and well to our north. All right, so storms up in North Texas. And, uh, yes, there's a moderate risk of severe weather up in uh, North Texas so all the way to the Red River the Valley tomorrow. Late, Slight risk here, marginal exams, uh, in our extreme her, northern counties. Future tracker, stray shower in the morning. And again, too inland in the afternoon. Sunday, morning clouds give way to afternoon sunshine. And that means a lot of heat here in the coastal bend. The wind forecast, windy tomorrow, big drop off Sunday. The best day of the weekend for your outdoor plans. Windy on Monday and obnoxiously windy here. On but Tuesday according to the director of, of next Rural week, Transit, all because Martin of low pressure Ojelas, out to the west. Is Here is your NEC co-op energy seven-day forecast. 87 mile 90 on Sunday and Monday. And all next week is going to be hot, humid, and obnoxiously windy. I'm telling you, it's not going to be pretty. Lows around 80 degrees next week. Highs around 90. Let's start. Inspection, weather, or other riders not being on time for theirs. This is Chris 6 News at 6. Right number two. Action. The City Parks and Recreation Department has a plan that sure to make a news They're working on a sure new system so. that would they send text notifications to people at some of our city parks. Now that includes the latest park over at City Park. Action Time Chief Meteorologist Sharon Ray with your top 10 and Park on the city south side. Good afternoon. It did warm up a little more today. In fact, right now, Corpus Christi is at 84 degrees. The dew point has come up slightly. It's feeling a bit humid out there. And right now, we are at anywhere from 84 at Corpus Christi to 70. That's 73 in Beeville, and that's rain through there as storms have been moving through. You can see we've only had a few spotty showers to the west in Duval County and northward, but it's in Bee County right here. You can see these showers and storms, they became a little better organized, and these are a little on the strong side. In fact, they're producing some pockets of heavy rain. Also, pea-sized hail is possible with these, and gusty winds over 40 miles an hour. Now, they are tracking too very slowly to the east-northeast, right along and just north the actually of Highway 77, so between 59 and 77, these will continue to track in that started. direction. But Those will gradually like die her, out here in the next hour or two. In fact, here's future track. You can see as they continue to slowly see this, uh, get get drift on to the east and get northeast through, and then starting you know, to die it's, out. It's been Just a couple of leftover showers are out there by the time we get into the 8 o'clock hour this evening. So it's going to be a mainly dry evening across the area, with the exception of any folks that have already seen that rain, of course, near Tomorrow morning, we start the day with some month, low clouds and, and ashy we'll fog, the and then we'll have a spot shower chance again tomorrow Chris afternoon. So lows continues. tonight stay near 70s to the Welcome low 70s. Welcome back, everyone. Right President Trump has announced a deal some that would end a trade dispute tonight. We still have a very Mexico. strong chance of a shower tonight. A lot of clouds around, and, and then those clouds will break up a bit tomorrow, giving us a very warm afternoon. Here is your hourly forecast for your Wednesday. Again, a lot of cloud cover. Some sunshine mixed in. Temperatures up to 82 by 1 o'clock. Feel the humidity tomorrow. To Winds coming out from the east up to but there's 15 no let up miles an hour as we do the reach China. into yeah, the lower to mid 80s. Even some how upper how much 80s are possible on our far inland areas. Of so Christi. Robstown, Corpus Christi, right around 85 tomorrow to 82 at Ingleside. He's live at the Ortiz Center this evening with more on that. another very warm day as temperatures are going to creep up over the next few days. If you're heading to the beaches tomorrow, there'll be some sunshine mixed with clouds tomorrow with an east breeze. Temperatures in the upper 70s to near 80 right at the beaches. The water temperature this morning was at 76. We have a low wind current sorghum. risk for tomorrow. Just the humidity. Recently, the Trump yeah, we got a little bit of a break from the heat and humidity this past weekend, but it's climbing again. The dew points are going to rise, good. and with that, it looks like by the time we get into Friday and the weekend, you're really going to notice it products. as we Starting see uh, that humid and very so warm air returning to the area. As far as any rainfall, there really isn't a lot in this week's forecast. As I mentioned, a spot thunderstorm chance tomorrow, but as we head into 
by Saturday. They may be a little more scattered by Saturday night because of the cold front to the north. Uh, during the day Saturday, can't rule out some because they have a negative we have very unstable and moist air over us. But as this front gets closer, you can see the line of storms here Saturday overnight. The United States economy is much less dependent on trade with China than China's economy is But we could get a few of those Saturday night into Sunday morning. There's our better chance that we'll see some more showers and storms. We have to watch. There could be a couple of those on the strong side. The air is very unstable this upcoming weekend. So you'll have a lot of dry times this upcoming weekend as temperatures are going to be quite warm, too. We're reaching into the upper 80s. If you factor in the humidity, take a look at this. The heat indices into the upper 90s by Sunday. That's what it's going to feel like. So get ready. It's the end of May. Getting into the end of May, we're going to feel that humidity. Here's the seven-day forecast, then. Nights are going to continue to warm up from the lower to the mid-70s as we head through the week. The wind picks up, too. That's one thing I want to mention. By Friday and Saturday, we're looking at wind gusts about 30 to 35 miles an hour. Temperatures climb, staying in the upper 80s with a chance of rain I mentioned for Saturday night. There is a new constable in Jim Wells County. He's out of Martinez. County commissioners approved Martinez's interim precinct one constable. He takes over for a long-time precinct one constable. And we can tell you from personal experience, you really need to be in shape to tackle this run. And one of the keys is to make sure that you're hydrated and you're taking care of your health. Salinas' last day will be May 31st. That's what doctors and nurses say. 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 That's what doctors and nurses say
Holly Thompson and, and Linda Murphy thousands of people will be competing in tomorrow's and ride. It's a race Harvey, for many, but for others, large furniture it's a way items. to give back. The Six News reporter really Catherine McGinty talked to no one police officer August, about what motivates him to, to, to purchase a brand new queen mattress. This, nice this weekend, mattress, Assistant Chief Mark Shower is taking off his badge and putting on his blue and green running shoes. Through a most to the promotion, the sisters were able to walk away with two mattresses for just over a thousand dollars. I just enjoy that peacefulness. One, one it's a solid They gave one mattress away Shower to a friend who had also lost a furniture in a hurricane and kept the other two put in their trailer the home. Time. But not even nine well, months in, they say uh, their mattress began to sink. Marathon in Oklahoma City, not quite three weeks ago.